Chris, go for it. Do the introduction. Hey, welcome back from forever and two days to the Low Sodium Podcast. My name's Chris, and this is Rob. Say hi, Rob. What's up, guys? All right, and, let's uh, do it. Yeah, so question for you. Right. Did you watch the Game Awards? I So I, I watched uh, some of it, and I, I watched clips in, uh, clips in the trailer. So I saw Christopher Judge's uh, Really speech. long speech? Yeah, 10-minute speech. Um Pretty emotional, I thought. I, but honestly, I, as I texted you before, I hands down he deserved that award, hands down. It was it was probably one of the best uh, art actors to play in a video game to actually play as a character in a video game, and I I was amazed. I got very emotional. A lot of the scenes that he made, and yeah, like it. it for me, it it was proof that the the cinematic universe is no longer only applies to movies and TV shows. It applies to video games too, and that the the method of seriousness in those video games definitely translates in God of War. So, I, was, I just started playing today. Um, I put about eight hours in. Uh, today, yeah, like, I woke up. Uh, yeah. It's like it's, it's, what time it's, is it? It's, it's like it's nine o'clock, and I started playing around like one. So, um, there's a scene when you're in out, spoilers for fucking God of War. <laughs> if you guys haven't played it, uh, skip ahead. <laughs> skip ahead about like five minutes. <laughs> but there's a scene where they're in Alfheim, and he thinks he hears something in the light. And oh my god. Yeah, and it's like this real like it's not necessarily that Christopher Judge did any acting, but it, it's it's something outside of that too, right? Where they've been able to get to the level of fidelity in games where they can convey emotion through the way the character looks, right? Yes. So it's not, just, it's not just the actors, all that stuff in the in between, right? Yeah. So I like right now I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Um, like I said, I've pumped like eight hours into it already, and it's my it's first addicting. Game. It's addicting. Like I, no, I, I get you because I, I, I remember playing it for a couple of hours the first day and then I'm like, oh my God, I, I need to play some more. <laughs> and, and it got to a point where like, I, like I went on vacation for, for Thanksgiving and I cannot stop thinking about it because I was 20 hours in by that point when I, I went on vacation, but it was yeah. a pivotal point in the story that I was like, Oh my <laughs> God, I cannot wait to come back. And, you know, and, but I missed that about video games. though. like, I really missed that. I, re I remember as a kid, uh, I re remember that I used to, I, I used to love going to, to trips uh, doing vacations and stuff while in the middle of the game, because like it made me look forward to coming back home and continue on that journey. The same yeah. applies now. Like, and I never felt like I haven't felt like this in a long time. And it made me feel like a kid again. Like, Oh my God, I really want to know what's next. So speaking of which, like the game awards overall, right? God, the God of war just raked in so many awards, right? Except game of the year. Elden Ring won Game of the Year. So it's like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like, is Elden Ring actually the Game of the Year, even though God of War took home way more awards? Like, I, I, I don't, I didn't count how many, because I watched, I watched the whole thing over the course of like two days, right? And I'm sitting here like, damn, like, every time something comes up and God of War's in it, it wins. I, I actually thought it was going to walk away with Game of the Year, but Elden Ring did. So, I think, which I think don't get fans, me wrong, don't I get me wrong. Fans, Other Rings is a good game, but I don't know. I think fans would have been a little bit upset if if Elden Ring didn't get Game of the Year. I think there was a lot of there. There are a lot of fans of Elden Ring, and, and yeah. they they have proclaimed it as Game of the Year. So that it won Game of the Year, it didn't surprise me. And I think part of the reason it didn't surprise me is because even though God of War Ragnarok was my game of the year, hands down. In fact, like it made me like it convinced me that I no longer uh, like wanted Microsoft Xbox ever again. I'm like I'm done with <laughs> Xbox after God of War. No, seriously, it, it just showed me like like Sony has come up with 
like game after game that is really good. But let me so, let me let me finish. Go ahead, so go ahead, go ahead. The, but God of War is just a continuing. God of War Ragnarok is just a continuation of God of War. There's not a lot that has changed in gameplay, even in graphics. It's like if you, I was playing, I, I started playing God of War 2018 again because there's so many references from the previous game, right? And God mm -hmm. of War Ragnarok that they do really good in uniting both. But even then, like you're looking at the graphics, there's not a lot of updates in the graphics itself. Uh, but but, you know, like, it's still an amazing game because of in the narrative sense and in in updating the gameplay itself. But Elden Ring made strides in not only using everything that the Muffron software has made before, but even making it 10 times better. Right? So, okay, so here's why I'm not buying an Xbox, right? Uh, it's because I have PC and I can get the games on PC, right? The next big thing, though, is, like, what have they released, right? Like, Halo came out this year. Last and that's year. it. Yeah, it's just one, twenty like, and 21. 20, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the only the only thing notable that they've released since Xbox Series S has came out is Halo. So, I mean, they've been focusing more on Game Pass, which, okay, cool, but, like, where's everything else? You know, where's where's the thing to make me be like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and pick up an Xbox or I'm going to get Game Pass because like, let's I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've had Game Pass probably for like four months now and I haven't played a single game on it. Me and this is my second, this is my second time getting it. Uh, yeah, I, I can play again. I, I, I have Game Pass too and I, I I see the games and I'm like, let me finish God of War or let me play Sifu or let me play Ratchet yeah. and Clank that are all like PlayStation exclusives. I I don't I don't find an interest at right now in the in the games that Xbox has. Now that could change with Starfield, but I mean Starfield again, it's gonna be a, a couple of months before I see it. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I am disillusioned with Xbox right now, and I, I, I've, I'm almost convinced that the next time that there's another another PlayStation Six in new Xbox, I'm going to say F <laughs> Xbox. I'm going PlayStation. Uh, it's well, it's <clears throat> we're at the point now. Like it took me two years to get a PS Five, right? It took me straight up two years to get this thing. So like I'm not. I'm not even in a in a realm right now of being like, oh well, when the next one drops, I'll, I'll, you know, like I'm trying to get that right away because I don't think I'm going to be able to, right? But at the same time, it's like I'm looking at this thing, um, and you know, I play PC primarily, right? Um, and I think this is it, it might be a little unfair comparison because it's the first time I've had like a 4K gaming like TV or monitor right so the tv behind me is a 4k tv put the playstation on it it looks amazing right and so i'm I'm, I'm looking at this and i'm like i don't remember this game looking as good you know what i mean like, <laughs> like i'm like this shit looks a lot like you know for a long time i was like i'm not gonna buy 4k until graphics cards like for my pc can reliably run it Right. Like I can make sure I get 4K 60 FPS. Now, when that happened, there was a there was a GPU shortage. Right. And so I, I've been just playing on 1440p. Um, mm -hmm. Now that these graphics cards are here, I'm going to make that jump because, again, that PS5 and like what Sony's been able to do with the machine itself. Where I'm playing God of War at 4K, it's running at a constant frame rate. I think I maybe had like one dip. And are you are you playing quality or are you playing performance? I'm playing performance because like yeah. uh, when I played the original, when I played 2018 God of War, I got motion sick from the uh, the frame dips. Like I, I was literally getting sick. I've never had that happen before. So like I, I noticed that too. Like once once you start seeing things in 60 frames per second, it's hard for you to come back to 30 because you start getting like your eyes are not used to it. I, don't I told you that. I told you that eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and and it's funny too because I I was a big fan of quality. Like I I mm -hmm. like most of the games that offer like uh like hey sixty frames per second man, stuff. Frames per second over over visuals 
Like, yeah. honestly, I'll be honest with you, because a 4K 30 image looks doesn't look as good or feel as good as a 4K 60. Image. And, and, and it's, it's it, that's important. It's how how it feels. So right yeah. now I have a V Sync, I believe it's called for my yeah. TV. So mm-hmm. like I can play games at 120 frames per second. So there's a God of War Ragnarok can take the frame rate off from 60 and increase it to. Uh-huh. Uh, to more frames and I even 60 now is it's no longer good for me because I am playing at a I Rob, just go cap. ahead and just go ahead and buy a PC man I, I, hope, and you, I, ho- I hope you get the parts together yeah <laughs> and, and, and it's in you know in a way it's true man um in a way it's true I realized that like if I could play cyberpunk 2077 in like max resolution max frame rate oh my god I would be in so heaven. so like you got to remember, like a lot, of, like every now and then, a game comes out that just pushes hardware so hard, or hardware can't catch up, or the game needs to be worked on a little bit that you won't be able to play with all the bells and whistles on. Yeah, right? uh, yeah. So like, you know, uh, you're right. You're even right. with yeah. even with the forty ninety, that big chungus of a of a graphics card, the people still aren't getting you know all the RTX belt, you know RTX with four K and 120 frames. They're not getting that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah. So, so. were from all, any of the trailers, right? Were any of the trailers from the game awards, were you, uh, were you, was there anything that like caught your eye? So, okay. So honestly, I, so I'll be honest. I hated, they, I didn't hate Death Stranding. I, so I played Death Stranding and I didn't, it's boring as shit. Yeah, you, it is. It is extremely boring as shit. And, and I, I finished it, but it was a struggle finishing it. I was very happy once I finished it. And you know, it's Hideo Kojima. Hideo Kojima is very uh, exaggerating sometimes in the way that he directs, like with the emotions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I gotta admit, Death Stranding too caught my eye, uh, especially. Especially the premise that now apparently there's a higher focus on the on the woman, and like why is she still there? I thought she died. Um, now she has a baby. I like, made it why like is, I made it like what? an hour into that game. Uh-huh. So I mean, like you, you can say whatever you want. Um, spoilers, spoilers for Death Stranding if anybody cares. But um. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, that looks interesting. The first game looked interesting. Is is you know, is Kojima. Like who doesn't who doesn't care when something he puts out or he said tweets something. Mm-hmm. What I what I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda disappointed like they're doing another one because it's like I, I, I want to do I, I want to do I, something I, else. No. And you know, and you're absolutely right. I'm disappointed too, but at the same time interested because he dared to do another one. Despite yeah. Despite the controversy of the first one, he dared to do another one, and the fact that he has uh, these high, like high end actors playing in, and he like yeah. this, and this other war girl that came out in the James Bond movies and other movies as yeah. well. Uh, the fact that, that she has that he has them, it, it does interest me. It's like what what idea made you say like, wait a minute, what if we go this direction instead? So I, it doesn't mean that I'm going to get it. I'm just saying that it interested me. Now, obviously, the one that I was waiting for was Jedi Survivor. So yeah, yeah, that looked yeah. really good, right? <laughs> so Fucking yeah, Jedi Cal, Survivor. Cal, Cal done grew up, got a beard uh, and shit. Uh, yeah, he looked rough. He looked <laughs> rough. So like, it, it, that's that's the one that really like I I immediately went once I wasn't watching the Game Awards, but when that shit popped out in my feed, yeah. it's like, oh, the trailer came out, boop, <laughs> March 17, twenty twenty three. I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve it. Like I, there are a few games that I reserve before coming out. I think Jedi Survivor is one of them. Uh, but I'll be honest, I reserved God of War Ragnarok like two or three months before. I, I reserved I reserved that game three three months before I I said to myself like this is a game worth reserving because no no like honestly my bar for reserving games is high but God of War Ragnarok I'm like I'm I'm looking at it like I I feel the passion of the developers I'm like yeah this is this is definitely one and Survivor might I mean, be another one I'm, 
all, all you're doing is saying like, "Hey, I'm going to spend money on your on your on your game." Right? Exactly. Like that's all you're. That's all you're saying. It's like, "Hey, you don't have to worry about me. I'm going to go ahead and drop drop the seventy dollars exactly. on you." Um, no, exactly. You know, and one thing that I really appreciated from Sony, especially the developers of Santa Monica, is that they said, "Like, listen, like we understand now that you're you're dropping seventy dollars on a video game." So we want to make sure that like you're getting your money's worth on those seventy dollars, and the director Eric Williams was absolutely right. Like I pay seventy dollars, but I they were well deserved seventy dollars. Uh, like I accept it. Like okay, if if seventy dollars, this is what we're, like seventy dollars is worth for a Sony game. Absolutely for any other game, I, I'm hard pressed. Like for example, Gotham Knights seventy dollars. I don't think so. You know, you know what I mean. But we like, I guess you know, straying from the from the topic a little bit. But we knew all, we knew that game was going to be bad, right? Like I saw the trailers and I was like, this doesn't look like it's going to be a good game. I had high hopes. I was like, maybe because like the concept of being able to play an Arkham game co op with friends, yeah, cool. But it's not an Arkham game. They tried exactly. to build it. They tried to build it like a live service game, kind of like Marvel Avengers, and that. Neither one of those games did well. And, like, they backtracked on it because Avengers didn't do well. They pulled all that shit out but didn't change any go- uh, core gameplay mechanics. You have a million different currencies to do anything. Like, that game looked bad before it came out. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong, there's people having fun with it. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. But... For the rest of us. Yeah, for everybody that has some common sense, that game does not it, look it, good. It, it, it and that the game doesn't seem like it had common sense from the very beginning. It's like so you're making a whole new Batman game without Batman. It, it, don't get me wrong. And I was I was listening to some some other podcasts. They're saying like it seems like Batman died, right? And Batman died in Gotham Knights. Why couldn't they just follow the premise of the Arkham games? Because in the end of Arkham Knight. Spoiler alert, Batman supposedly dies, he disappears, right? They why couldn't they start off there? So like now that Batman is gone, like how do these heroes unite to protect Gotham? Mm-hmm. Right? They didn't do that. They just decided to do a completely separate story from the Arkham games and it's its own universe. And yeah. I'm not interested in that universe anymore. Because I'm like, I invested so many hours in the Arkham games. Yeah, I, I can now. see. I I see why. The, I, like, I can see why you you start over, right? Like, I I can see that. The same thing when you like talk about movies. Yeah. And it's same, but yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, like, 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 like they're trying like, to distance if, themselves if, away if, from if, it. If if if, if the, I, the, but the they, main they, they reason, but dis- I already said the main reason why they did it. The main reason why they did it is because they're trying to make a live service game. That's why you had the different skins. That's why you had the different. It, it's skins. funny. It's yeah, funny that you say that, though. They use a lot of the same gameplay from the Arkham games, but they not use the same storyline. It's like if you're gonna make a completely new game, the gameplay even it's is is it's not even really the same though. And it's atrocious, right? It's a it's a it's a shell of the Arkham games. Like you, they were doing a a side by side comparison between the Arkham Knight and Gotham Knights. Yeah, it's like even the graphics in Arkham Knight are better. Oh yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's... <laughs> Yeah. So it's like rough. it's a shell. It's a shell. Like I, I think it was just a, it was a horrible story. It was um, a horrible gameplay. It just like I am a Batman fan through and through, but I will not spend seventy dollars on it. I will not spend a dime on it. It's like if you're gonna make a good <laughs> game, like invest good, like invest good money on it, and 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 care about the fans. Don't try to squeeze their money. So I, that's why I feel that God of War wasn't really about squeezing people's money. It's about telling a story the way that the director wanted to tell it. Yeah. So, so like, like I, and, and right. it's funny too because any every Sony game that I have played, in not all of them, but most of them, really hit the mark on like even though like not all of them hit the, uh, it, not all of them are super great for. But for the most part, you get an experience nonetheless. Yeah, it's like you get a good experience nonetheless. You're like, all right, it, it was it was it was decent. It wasn't great, but it was decent. You know, so yeah. like I I am no. very I'm in the Sony bandwagon right now. Like I think um, 
the, my biggest takeaway is like the whole that like that that's the pre-order thing right like you heard the name arkham knight and you're like oh the batman arkham games you know like i i love those games right and it kind of reels you in with that name and then it's completely not what you expect it to be i am wholly on the uh the man wagon of wait and see right like i am not dropping my money i'm not pre-ordering my money and tying it up with the with the game company or Steam or Xbox, Sony, whoever, to pre-order a game that I'm going to download anyway. They are not going to run out of copies. The only way, like, and I was thinking about this too, the only way is if I'm excited for something. But when's the last time, when's the last time, at least for me, that I've been really excited for a game? God of War, for, for me, it's God of War Ragnarok. I never the last time I got really excited for a game to come out was Grand Theft Auto V. Like I've been, I, I, I've been thinking I about I, that for days. I didn't, I, I didn't even pre-order that one. I, I bought it after after I saw the reviews, and after it took me like a month after I got it. I but, like uh, up I, to that yeah. point. Up to that point, I had such a like like I, I was so excited. Like we talked about this in the office, man. I was so excited about like the open city and like where things could go. Like it wound up going completely different than what I thought, right? But the main game was still good. And I was still excited and satisfied and impressed with, you know, like with everything. I was happy with the money that I spent, right? But that's the last game that I was super excited about that I actually pre-ordered and was satisfied with my pre-order, right? So I haven't pre-ordered a game since then. I don't remember what I think. I don't I don't remember the last game that I pre-ordered. I think it was, honestly, like it's been, I, like I think Ragnarok was my first one. <laughs> <laughs> it is the first game that I have ever pre-ordered in my life. I'm like, I am. I'm gonna. I, I got more already know, and the reason why I'm doing it is because I want to support Sony Santa Monica. Yeah, it's like that. It's like it's like the stock market, right? Oh, but you're not getting anything back. But you you know that you're investing because you want to make sure that this company is successful in the future. You know, like they're already making group. They're gonna get. So they're gonna get my money. They'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, well, it, de- it, well, it depends, right? Like you, you just want to, you know, like I, I, that's how I, I think that's how I feel. Like I, 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 sometimes I buy games just to say like, I am supporting your company. So I do, I do want to kind of go back a little bit. Right. Um, I just want to say that I was right. And that Returnal is coming to the PC. Um, so then I, ne- I never, I never argued with you. With you were like, I, you said, you said you doubt it. You said no, you I never it. said you that. You did, because you, you, said, you said because of the controller and how integral the controller was to the combat that you felt like it wasn't going to... Uh, oh, okay. So, like, yeah, yeah, I'm still, yeah you're right. I, I'm I right, think yeah. I, I I wonder if you can use the the controller, the PS5 controller on uh, playing the PC, and you still have the haptic feedback. I don't know. I'll let you know. I don't think yeah, you're going to have... I don't think you're going to have the feedback. Okay, um, so, like, the, the feedback, I... I do notice that I so I played Cyberpunk 2020, 2077 on the Xbox first, and then they had uh, PlayStation had like a exclusive deal where like you can play like five hours of twenty seventy seven on the PlayStation. So I said like you know let me check it out. The feedback in the controllers is what gives that that umph that is yeah. like additional experience that I'm like okay this is. A way better experience than I had on the the Xbox. So like I, I can see that I would prefer like if the, if two games came out and one had to have their feedback, I would always go for the PlayStation now because it's yeah, just a, it. a better experience. Yeah, like I was torn around with Astro's Playroom and like the the <laughs> level of yeah that yeah blowing <laughs> the and and shit like it's really uh. The the level of like just control that you do have with it, it's kind of wild. But like I've I've never been good with motion controls within the controller because I've taught myself over thirty years not to move the controller around because it doesn't do anything, and now the controllers do something. And so like I catch myself trying to use this analog stick trying to move around. But I that's just a learning curve. This is you know getting used. To I do it. notice I do notice that a lot of the video games that I play don't have 
the like you move around the controller, mm-hmm. they do have to have the feedbacks, right? So mm-hmm. like if you're stretching a bow, you can definitely feel that stretch on the bow. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If you're like using an axe, you can definitely feel, feel like that. Yeah. Of the axe, but yeah, you don't have a lot of motion control, like actual motion control, which is good. I, I'm not a fan of it either. I am a fan of the haptic feedback, and I even bought a Call of Duty Cold War. Um, on the PlayStation Five, which was thirty bucks, I'm like, I, I took advantage of it because I want to experience the the haptic feedback. I heard that cool Call of Duty Cold War has a very yeah. good haptic feedback on the game on PlayStation Five. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the future of Sony. I'm excited for the the additional games. I even like, even though I was not a, I, I probably won't get it. I even downloaded for Spoken. Um, mm-hmm. for the PlayStation Five, it's a it's a demo. So I, I if they're they're giving out the demo, I'm gonna try it out and see if I like. Yeah, it. yeah. The yeah, I heard about it. Uh, I haven't downloaded it yet. Like I gotta use. So I have to use my phone as a hotspot with the Wi-Fi here to get be able to play anything on the PlayStation. So like downloading stuff takes a night. Oh, <laughs> you I'm, know I, what I mean? So I, I, I'm like, absolutely sure. So, but yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, as okay, far as so I, go ahead. No, I I wanted to see if you were interested since it's December and we had we haven't spoken probably like in three or four months, right? Um, I wouldn't say that long. I, no. Okay, uh, so we haven't spoken in a little bit, but now we're we're coming out in December. <laughs> uh, you already know my, like what my game of the year is, but. Like, do you want to do a, like a list? The three, like, three so, best games that you play this year? I probably only played three games this year <laughs> Destiny 2, freaking Red Dead Redemption, and God of War, right? Like, well, I played some other <laughs> stuff, but like, you know, um, I haven't really put a whole lot of time into like building out a list. I will say that, like, what I've really been doing is trying to crack down, like, work on like my backlog a little bit. Uh, played through the Marvel Spider-Man on my Steam Deck. That was the first game I beat on my Steam Deck, which, like, made me fall in love with the thing as long and let me know, like, hey, this is a viable... Like, if people just want a game on a Steam Deck, like, they don't want to buy, like, dedicate, like, a TV and space in their house to gaming, a Steam Deck Mm -hmm. is perfectly viable. Um, Beat the main story of Red Dead Redemption, and I gotta say... The story of that game is amazing, but it's You talking about the second one? Yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Yeah. The story of that game is amazing. It just takes forever. Like, that game is great in spite of itself. Yes. Right? (laughs) In spite of itself. I beat it twice, too. I mean, like, I I I could see myself going through it again. Um, I could see myself playing through it again. Not right now, but it would definitely be something that you know, in a later date, like taking more time, hunting all the animals and finding the mysteries mm-hmm. and all this other, looking for the vampire in San Denis. You know what I mean? Like doing that stuff. But like right now, I did, it's yeah. like I, I did all that. Yeah, I did all that. Even like Amazing. trying to beeline through the story is going to take you like 60 hours, right? Like the the game, the game is, the game is, is filling itself and it, it makes it, it makes it hard to enjoy it. You get what I'm saying? Like the game oh, is like I I, I know I I'm great I know I'm great see how great I am uh-huh. and at the same time it's like yo let me just play let me just how about you just let me play the fucking game how about that how yeah, about you quit showing off right uh, you're talking about Rockstar just showing off yeah Rockstar like, oh, just could... like I get that like the horses poop but you don't have to have the horses poop constantly like that's one thing that I noticed immediately right like the horses are constantly shitting like constantly <laughs> shitting. <laughs> right, and I get you're trying to be realistic and have an authentic experience in this game, right? But it's a fucking video game. The horses don't need to shit that much. I mean, it, <laughs> you're, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it, I think uh, God of War, I got a War, um, Red Dead Redemption Two is just to show off on how advanced our technology can be on these newer systems on on the pc now like what we can do uh, i do think they they went overboard and even though it was selected as game of the year and a lot of it like it was hard to go through it was definitely hard to go through so and- i bought it when it originally came out i, I bought it in 18 
and I just put it down. I was like, I can't. I'm not gonna sit here and try and make it through this shit. Like, I think oh, I got I to the it. first shootout, the first shootout with the O'Driscolls, and I just stopped. I was like, okay, I'm good. Like, uh, I I tried to play the first one, and the first one I felt the same exact way. I was like, I like the concept of riding a horse in the Wild West appeals to me, but whatever the fuck they were doing in both these games at first, I just I don't know. I I had to kind of force my way through. I didn't part. like Red Dead Redemption 1, I'll be honest. Like, everybody's like, oh, Red Dead, Red, Dead, Red Dead Redemption 1 and the ending. The ending was fantastic. I just, like, it was... I, spe- I, I played it right before Red Dead Redemption 2. It was rough going through, man. It's hey, like, it, it is, it's yeah, an old it's, game. Yeah, it's old. It's old at that point. You know, at that point, yeah. it was eight years old. So, yeah. yeah. It's an old game. But uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I, I do know that Arthur Morgan was a fantastic character. Mm-hmm. I played the and I played the good side, and I think that's how you're supposed to play it because there's a message in you playing as the good guy in him trying to find redemption. It is called Red Dead Redemption, right? So yeah, in he is trying to find redemption in his actions, and at the way that it ended, and the way that uh, that he rescued. Um, I think I think up to a certain point, right? Like so, like there's a part in the story. Where he eventually, like, the, when he finally gets sick, I think is where he where he starts to reflect on his life, and he's like, "Hey, yes. I've done some really shitty things, right?" Like, and yeah. I think like you could probably play that game as a bad guy, and then but at that, that point, at that point, that point, I think it naturally kind of like he could have been good or bad, but to that point, he starts to get in. He's doing his self reflection. Where like even like the the wife of the dude that he beat up for the money, I free, I think it's Downs, yeah. Mrs. Downs. Yeah, or, the, the, um, I remember it. That, yeah, it's that's where he's like, "Yo, I've done a lot of wrong, and I'm not looking for anything, but I'm doing this because it's the right thing." Like he's basically saying, "I like I don't know why I'm doing this, but it feels right. Like I need to make sure y'all are okay. Like yeah. I fucked up your life. I killed you. Like I I essentially killed your husband. Like I'm trying to make sure y'all are okay. And so yeah. like." And that that right there is also what kills him, right? Like this simple act is what killed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like he's doing that self reflecting. He knows what he did was wrong. You know what I mean? Like he's he's just trying to, like you say, he's trying to redeem himself. And like it, and he like, and it, he, it good... he, he could have he, he could have been upset too, right? Because he 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 knew that it was because of that situation that he had that fight with. He got sick. Yeah. Right. And and instead of like feeling sorry for himself and being upset that he got sick because of this person. He's like, I'm going to try to take care of his family instead. Yeah. It, it's a, I, I, it's a damn good. It's a, the, the characters, the story, the world, even like for the longest time, even, I didn't fast travel. Like for the longest time I wouldn't fast travel, but there came a point. It was like, I need to finish this shit. And I just started fast traveling because I was like, I got, I got to finish this game. But like yeah. the world, the setting, the characters. I mean, Dutch was a fucking great character. Micah, I hated the Micah. shit out of him. Like, oh, like yeah. Charles, Lenny, like those characters were really fucking good. Karen, Karen, like Karen, you barely see her a lot, but when you do, it's like it's really entertaining. Like she's she's yeah. such a fucking she's a character, you know, like she's yeah, she's wild. It's it's funny as hell. So yeah, like I again, they did a really great job. And then to have John Marston in it and him not be a a major major role until like the end felt really felt felt appropriate. So like yeah, it, it's and it's called an epilogue. So like I think yeah. they, they put a lot of effort on that epilogue too. Yeah, it's I haven't like, made it all. That shit's long, man. I haven't made it all through. <laughs> oh yeah, you haven't finished the epilogue too. Like no, so like that. No. The epilogue it closes closes it nicely, but uh, but yeah, like I I really like the attention to detail. I do know that Rockstar would what the attempt at Rockstar was to make you feel to make you care for this band uh, of criminals. Yeah, they they he they just wanted you like to go to the camp and see the interactions between everybody day by day. Take it slow, take it smooth, and. I mean, really have you care for these these people because they were living day day to day lives and you were actually knowing them. You yeah, know, like it, yeah. So like when things happen, when they actually when people started dying towards the end, you felt it. 
Yeah. But if you felt that you actually like you actually had a, a member of the family, you lost a member of the family. Like when Lenny died, that was yeah. Like Lenny and and Morgan were very close. Like Morgan saw him as a as a apprentice to him. Yeah. Right? And when he, when Lenny died, you, I can definitely feel it. Freaking uh, shout out to Mrs. Grimshaw, the most gangster yes. person in the whole they, fucking group. Miss Grimshaw was not playing any games, man. No, nah, no. Nah. It's a. And when she a, got shot at the end, that was sad. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, she. It's rough. It's rough. I will say it that I, I think I do think that I don't think. Okay, so playing it on the PC allowed me to make it through it, uh, rather than the PS4. But I think. If I had a, if I would have played through with a controller, I would have had a better experience. The a lot of the controls for that game on the keyboard are mapped all over the keyboard, right? So if I wanted to uh, call my horse, I had to hit H. If I wanted to get into, I had I, like I'm just hopping all over the keyboard, and then God forbid I take like because like I started playing before I got out here, right? And so like I didn't play for like two or three weeks. I get back. I sit down and like, I'm trying to remember what buttons I have to press. Like it, it got wild. I will say this too, uh, on another thing on the gameplay, right? As Arthur got sick, the game got harder, right? It got harder to aim. His dead eye didn't last as long. Yes. <laughs> but the game also got harder, right? Yeah. So like there would be more enemies and they're, they're firing from everywhere and you're trying your best to freaking like make headshots and the gun is, you know, your reticle. It's just too, it, it, it's too realistic, ridiculously <laughs> real. It's like, holy crap. And, and I also like the subtleties of how he got sick. I don't know if you noticed, but he started coughing. Yeah, he starts coughing. Like, like, he starts coughing, but are, like in the middle of the game, not even like, not even like, tw like a few hours after he got, you know, that interaction, like you can start hearing him cough, but suddenly just one cough, cough and you don't hear it again for a while, but then he coughs again and you're like, hmm. Yeah, the cough is fit where he like, so, like, I'm like, damn, he's, you know, he's starting to cough a lot, right? And then like <laughs> a, a few days, like, you know, it took me like two days later and then he like, he has a coughing fit and fucking falls over. I'm like, oh shit. Uh, right? uh, like, sh yeah. It's those subtleties, man. It's those subtleties that really I really enjoy. But it going okay, so that that's the thing that makes a great game. So like it's the it's the attention to detail to the world. It's that yeah. world building. So Red Dead Redemption Two, I think, got game of the year because of that world building. Uh, Ragnarok, I feel it's a great game because of that world building. So Ragnarok. If you look, I, I said again, you play 2018 and then you play 20, uh, the 2022 one, it, it seems like a seamless transition because the graphics haven't really been updated that much. Some of the clothing, some of the, the facial expressions are better. But overall, it seems like a seamless transition. In that, though, because they decided to focus more on world building, building I think it was the best decision because there's so many subtleties to the game that hint at like the overall world it makes it an even better experience than 2018s so yeah. in, in 2022 like even it's like I, I, I you had interactions with odin but there's no spoiler so odin has tattoos of his two birds and those two birds come out of his yeah body. yeah i know this and, yeah and, mm -hmm. yeah so like those two birds, though, like sometimes, like when you're interacting with Odin later on in the game, you can see like one bird, or sometimes you don't see any birds. So, like you know that in in the world they're out there, like just by yeah. looking at his uh, at his tattoo. And you're like, okay, so that's very subtle, uh, a very subtle thing about God of War, or or for example, all the things that you find in. God of War 2018, God of War Ragnarok makes 2018 even better because they use so, so many of the subtleties of yeah. God of War 2018. Like all those murals that you find yeah. in mm -hmm. 2018, yeah. it's like, like they, they're they enhanced because of Ragnarok. So now playing 2018, like I can follow more of the story. So, it's, it's, it's a so better game now because of Ragnarok. Comparing these two games versus the old trilogy, you know, the old God of War games, right? Where Kratos at the end of 
the first one, he's all powerful or, you know, he's powerful. He's done this and that. And they do something to strip all that power away. Right. In this game, they just make you even more powerful. Right. So like he has some armor left over. Now, Mimir does say like, hey, all our magic got worn down from, you know, Fimble uh, Winter. Fimble Fimble Winter. Right. And Mm -hmm. it's it's but it doesn't feel like I've been handicapped. I'm not I don't feel like I'm starting off at square one again. I still have, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Blades of Chaos. I still have the axe. I still have the shield. You know what I mean? I, I start off with armor, you know, so like. And Kratos says like he has one line where it's like Brock was like, what happened to all the stuff I gave you before? He's like, I used it. Right. And it makes perfect sense. He's just like, I used it. Like I don't have it anymore. And it, yeah. it, it fits right in. It fi- it feels, it doesn't feel like I'm retreading old ground right now. It feels like I'm just continuing along a path that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like uh, they stripped everything from me so that, you know, they can start it over again. So my understanding is that three years in the game, in game, three years have passed. Mm-hmm. So a lot has happened in those three years. So like, yeah, he, he used it, got worn down, and get it now. He needs to re like rebuild his daggers. He rebuild his um, his axe, and it, 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 for me, it makes total sense. But I, I could I, if you finish twenty twenty two Ragnarok, I would recommend, and you love it. I would recommend before doing it again, if you do decide to do it again, I would recommend that you replay 2018 because 2018, like even, even like when you find the lore in 2018, a lot of the names in the lore come out in Ragnarok and it makes even like the connection even, (laughs) even more awesome. It's like, holy shit. It's like, that makes perfect sense. It's, I, I, I was so I was so happy. I was so happy with Ragnarok. I, I I got so emotional a lot of times. I, I teared up. I teared up towards the end. I teared up towards the middle. I I think that like Crater Hut Kratos has become a great father. It's like it that's his I think that's his overarching like growth. It's just becoming a great father. Yeah. A great, a great role model for his son. Yeah. No, like there there's a point. Because there's there's moments where I like I want to tell Kratos uh, Atreus to shut the fuck up, right? Like he's just he kept talking about tear and he kept talking about war and this and that. I'm like, kid, and me, like I'm sitting in the chair, like shut the fuck up. We haven't even found the guy yet. We don't know. We don't know what this guy is gonna be like. Like shut up, right? Like, but uh, Kratos has a level of calm about him now that that shows that he's grown, right? So yeah, in 2018 he was like if you play 2018, yeah, he was not patient at all. No, with with Atreus, he's like, boy, I told you <laughs> not to speak of this again. And you're like, you're like, oh. <laughs> like, and, and that's the thing about it, right? It's a, like that's why I love these two games. It's like it it, it shows a, a character development seldom seen in video games. It's like where you understand where Kratos is in 2018, and now you understand where Kratos is in Ragnarok. Yeah. It's like, okay, it makes perfect sense. A lot of people, I I was listening to some people complaining about Kratos being softer. And it's like, did you not play 2018? Did you not see the journey that he went through with his I, I wonder, I, I really wonder about, like, so if we're, go, we're going to hop into that, because I was thinking about that too, right? Um where, because uh, apparently God of War, Ragnarok, it has been getting review bombed on Metacritic, and I, I wonder about that, right? Like you, you say that Kratos isn't, or I feel like they're coming from a disingenuous place, right? That, or they genuinely think like, why isn't he like the mad rage monster that he was in the previous games, right? And it's like, well, one, either you didn't play it, or two you haven't grown up enough to really understand what's going on. Like, are it like, I think it's, it's fair to say that most people that are approaching the age of 40 are not the same person they were at the age of 20. They're yes. not the same person they were at the age of 30. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, like Kratos has a kid that he's actually trying to not kill this time. 
right? And he wants to make sure that he grows up not to be rage, res- rage filled, resentful, you know, little shit. Because that's what most gods grow up to grow out to be. Like Thor, as awesome as that guy was, right? He, that 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 whole introduction scene, uh, yeah, Odin, that was pretty epic. Thor and Kratos sitting at the table, and like Odin's like, <laughs> "I offer you peace." Kratos says, "No, no." <laughs> <laughs> I would say that it took me out a little bit the way Odin talks because he talks like a modern day gangster, right? He talks, he doesn't seem like he's, he seems like he's from 2020, right? He doesn't seem like whatever time frame this is taken from, it's like he stepped outside of his universe into ours. It's like, hey, I like the way Joe Pesci talks. I'm going to talk like Joe Pesci, right? And you know, he, you know, you know why the director was telling that he, he was inspired by a Bronx tale. So oh, in a Bronx I mean, tale, yeah. 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 So in a Bronx tale that you have Robert De Niro serving as a father and you ha- he has a son, but the son is being manipulated by a gangster. Yeah. Right. So like he wanted that experience, like that you have well, the, that you shit got came Robert across De Niro, well. Yeah. That shit you have Robert across. De Niro. Uh, that is trying to do his best as a father, and then you have this gangster like, "I'll give you everything that you need," and that's how Odin sounded like. Hey, I, I like listen, you, you, whatever you need, okay? If you want to join me, if you want to know more knowledge, I, I'm here for you. You know, exactly. And that's I don't so, want to say too much of the story, but that's where it's heading. So, about how long? How long is the game? So, uh, so. I, I'll be honest. So, like, I played, like, I I was so obsessed with the game that I found all the, all the artifacts. I found all the poems because I'm sure you you noticed in the poems. Did you see? Did you find the poems? Uh, yeah, I've I've got like four, I think. And if you notice, you read the poems. Yeah, I've read two of them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're references of the games that Sony games. Okay. So like the last last of us is there, Ratchet and Clank is there. Um, what uh, what is it? Astro World or whatever it is. Uh, Astro's the, Playroom. I think Astro's Playroom. Yeah, oh, Astro's yeah. Playroom is there too. So like a lot of references. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, but I, I I collected all of them just because I wanted to see more interactions between Mimir and Kratos and all that stuff. And okay. I finished it and. I, it took me like fifty hours, fifty one hours to finish. Fifty one hours to be a completionist. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> but but I was reading. I was reading that if you just want to go through the story, it is twenty to twenty five hours. Yeah, so I'll probably put about somewhere between like thirty and forty. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to get everything. I'll be honest with you. Like I'll do no, it if I, I see I'm, it, and if it takes too long, I'll probably skip it. <laughs> No, and that just shows, for me at least, I, I'm not. I, I'm more like you. Like if I, I, if I don't, if I don't like a game a lot, or like if I just like like yeah. it normally, I won't finish everything, right? But for like God of War Ragnarok, for me, it's like, oh my god, this the the story was so epic that I'm like, I need to know everything. It is. In fact, uh, I want to know. Like the thing that I want to know the most is like what are the hints for future? Because God of War Ragnarok is it's like the director said, this is this is the end of the North mythology. So like I wanna know where's it heading now. Like and there's some hints in the world, but it's not enough to satisfy me. In fact that I was re- I was listening to a podcast for that Eric Williams, the director, was playing. He said that there's certain things in the game at the end that that are happening, and if you notice it, if you notice it, you start realizing that we're hinting at the future. And I'm like, okay, I'm like so I checked everything, and, and it does it does hint at the future of where they're going, and it's it is interesting now that I think about it. It it. I know more or less. I think I know more or less where the game is going. You, you know, you. I, I want to say this real quick, and I, I, I am appreciative of the fact that they decided to do it in two games and not three. Yes. I, I, I don't know, man. There's something about having to wait. You know, like what this came out in 2022, so four years. It's like, it's like, 
people played this in high school, graduated college, and now they're playing it again. You know what I mean? Like, that's a long time. I really do wish sometimes that they could do the whole game and, and do the whole story in one game. And, like, if it's really good, I mean, people are going to sit there for it. I mean, how many millions of people sat through RDR2? You know what I mean? Like, that game's long. The, yeah, like, but Rockstar has a bigger budget, though. So You're uh, telling it, me. You're telling me that they Corey Balrog or whoever couldn't have been like, yo, I want to knock this out in one go. Well, Corey Balrog had to prove himself in God of War 2018 because it was a, it's like God of War 2018 was a bet. And Corey Balrog won that bet. And now they gave him more money for it. But 2018, they Sony was not um, convinced that it was going to be a hit. It was the people that once they saw it. I mean, it was a def- it was definitely was a it definitely was such a departure from what it origi- what God of War originally was. That yeah, I, I can definitely see that. So like, and I and I'm, I'm happy about it too because honestly, I didn't. Like I played all the God of Wars. Mm-hmm. I didn't like Kratos as a, as a character. No, Kratos you're not supposed. To. I don't think you're supposed evil. to. I don't <laughs> think you're like. I don't evil, think. Man. Like it's it's no, just like it's just like to. it's just like Tyler Durden or uh you know like you're not supposed to like the guy. You're supposed to see where that leads you, right? And I, I think that's that's another like really good point, right? Is is that. People, I think some people they see how cool it is, right? Oh, this guy, you know, in God of War One, you know, you can have sex with the girls on the on the ship and kill kill a Hydra, right? And you're killing these gods, and you're this muscular big dude, and like the ghosts of Sparta and shit like that. But you know, Spartans don't exist anymore. You know why they don't exist anymore? Because they had like right. some toxic fucking, you know, you know, they were taken over, they were fight to the last, and all this. Yeah. And, like they don't exist anymore because the the of war, right? Like they they lose out. Yeah. And, like that's a bad trait to have. That that's not something you don't want to lead with war. War is only necessary. War should be necessary when you're trying to defend yourself, right? That's that's the message that like this game is getting trying to get across. Like yes. uh, Atreus keeps talking about war. And and Tyr should be the one that lead us into like that's where I'm at. You know, Tyr should be the one, and he's noticed that Tyr is like Tyr kills a fucking elf, and he's like fucking distraught. He's like, you know, like, but I get it. I, I get why they're they're going. They don't want to fight. Why Kratos is like, yo, you need to train before we just run headlong out there. He doesn't mm-hmm. want the boy to be unprepared. He doesn't want the boy to come up the way he did. And so, like, I, I think people are that are upset with the game, not, you know, Kratos not running headfirst into battle and stuff like that. They're missing the point that Kratos has grown. He knows that's not the way to go. He knows how much heartache that can bring. Literally, exactly, literally responsible for the death of millions. And he, that, yes, that literally responsible to, for the death of Greece. Yeah. You know, Olympus. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, the guy was destruction in itself and mm-hmm. the fact that he that his son so the way that i see it is the son saves the father the father saves the son mm-hmm. but like, and that's that's how that's how the game that's the definition of ragnarok it is I mean, the, son, the son saves the father the story the father the i mean and what's what's really another interesting point as you say that right it, red dead 2 with uh eagle flies uh, the when you meet with the natives and like the father is trying to save his son, he's doing everything he can. He's telling that war is not the way. He's like, "Yo, we lost this. We can't fight this." You know, like th- there isn't there there isn't a winning situation for us. Whether we what if we fight, like we can live and we can protect our people. If we don't, mm-hmm. the son decides to fight. Right? How many? And how he many? Dies. He dies. He dies. How many of the, their people die? There will be retaliation, right? We don't get to see all of it, but a lot of army folks die. Let me tell you something. When police die and when army folks die, you know, when soldiers die, people want fucking revenge. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, like, I, I don't know. I'm assuming, right? But I'm pretty sure all the majority of that tribe got wiped out within, you know, five years. They probably sent people down there and wiped them out. 
because of the actions so, of one guy. So if you so a, a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, you probably won't find it if you if you're not looking, right? So like if you go down the train station in the mining area mm -hmm. east of the east of the map, the train station has um, uh, eagle flies. In there. Okay. So eagle flies is there, and he talks to he talks to I forget his name uh, Morgan. Uh, he talked not Morgan the other John. Guy. Yeah. John John Marston. He talks to John Marston. Talks a little bit about it. I, I think you should you should check it out. It, it's a good send off to Eagle Flies. Yeah. So I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, like I'm gonna get back into it. I definitely want to finish that vlog, but like I said, it's a long ass game. <laughs> I want to do. I, I do want to do a video on it, but yeah, the, the, finish Ragnarok because I think uh, we we still uh, have yeah. a lot to talk about Ragnarok. I, Ragnarok, I got, Ragnarok I got a lot. Has... I got a lot of juggling to do. It's a new se season on Destiny 2. I got to get, you know, I want to do the dungeons and shit. Fucking. Yeah. I want to finish off I, the epilogue with uh, Red Dead. You know, so what, one thing that I noticed about me is, like, after playing, I played Elden Ring and I played Ragnarok. And I, I played Elden Ring and I, I I enjoyed Elden Ring. I I wasn't a big fan of it as I wanted to be. Like I, I saw a lot of people really liking it. I it's not that it was hard, it's just that it's like I found it I I found it kinda the storyline wasn't that great from my standpoint. From my standpoint. And I also felt that the game wasn't meant for everyone, even though a lot of people bought it. It was so... definitely not meant for for everybody. What I will say, yeah. at least from my my from my my point of view, that the story in any of those games is never good, right? Because I have to go, I, see, I have I, to I, go to I, outside I, source to get the story. So I go to uh I watch Vadi no, and, and he 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 goes in and he reads all the item descriptions and he pieces together and he looks at the environmental storytelling. Yeah. He pieces together the story, right? And to me, like uh, I, like if I'm not getting into the game, like yeah, he makes some great videos based off this stuff. And if you've never watched one, I'll send it to you later. But I don't play those for the story. I'll be honest with you, like I, I don't. The story is not what drives me to play those games at all. So, so like that's the thing. So, like it, and I believe that in Demon Souls and Bloodborne and Sekiro, those are the three games that I played from software before jumping into Elden Ring. And those three games actually had a, a simple but interesting story if you look into it, and I enjoyed that. So, so I enjoyed those stories. I guess... And then, in Elden Ring, in Elden Ring, it was, it was, the story was so huge, and, and like, the map it's was not so even, long. It's, that, it's not even there, though. Like, like okay, yeah, exactly. have you played... Have you played so you didn't play Dark Souls, one, two, or three. I, I, I so like I didn't. I, I only played Dark Souls one a little bit, and then I I jumped to Dark Souls three. And There's so I, much work to be done to get the story to me that like I don't do it. I go to like I said, I go to an outside source for the story, right? Yeah. And like yeah, yeah. Sekiro, blood, like Bloodborne, Bloodborne to me like. Yeah, the story's I, there, I, but again, you got You have to do some digging for I, that story. I, it's great, I, but so, it was something about the it's some, something about the world building. That yeah, I, really I mean, enjoy. like the world I, I, about Bloodborne. The world uh, about Bloodborne. <laughs> I didn't. I, I don't think I. I, I was kind of like, it, it, maybe it's irrational of me to say, but I find I found it too magical. What? Like, Elden Ring. Are, uh, Elden Ring. Yeah, it's like there, things are just because they are. You know, it's like, I mean, I, but, so like uh, when I was in school, right? So just a reminder that I'm an art major, right? And when I was in school, I had this this thing where it was kind of like, just because I make something doesn't mean it has to mean anything, right? Like I can make something and it exists and it is what it is. You take from it what you take from it, right? So the the world of Elden Ring, I, like the way that y these games always play out, is that you're there after the big the big battle. You're yes, there after I... the story. The story's already happened. You're there to clean up, right? And like that's <laughs> okay. like, like seriously, that's that's, uh, that's, that's like, what you're it there, is. Yeah. You're there to clean up, uh. right? And so it puts you in this world. You see all this aftermath, and like the reason why 
I enjoy, enjoyed Elden Ring as much as I did was the sense of exploration, right? Like you, the world is so huge, right? And like, you're going here, you're going there. You see Kaled for the first time, you nope the fuck out of there. And you're like, yo, what else is there? And then you look at your map and you realize there's a whole top half that you haven't even been to yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. like, I, I, I know it can, I, I, I the way you I, feel I, I, about I, the map on this is how I was feeling about Red Dead. It was like, yo, this game is fucking huge. I have all of here to go to, I have there to go to, like, but with, with Elden Ring, I felt more engaged with it because the game would let me play. If I got on my horse, it was easy to get on my horse. It was easy to get to the exactly. Area. Like it wasn't like Red Dead where if you lose your horse, you have to walk all the way to like the yeah. location to get your horse back. Red Dead made things hard. Uh but my but in, in Ragnarok when I was playing it, like Ragnarok had purpose, right? So like it, it and this is where I'm coming from. I'm not I'm not ditching on Elden Ring. I'm just saying that I noticed and I have accepted that for me, my favorite type of video game is a cinematic experience. So yeah, I get that's it. why I like the last last so much. That's what, that's I why it. I love like God God of War so much. Like these and, these these thoughts of like these are things that I've been thinking about recently. And 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 I'm not I don't think I have a preference of one over the other. I think I do enjoy I, I enjoy them equally. Um but I, I will say like right now, like and I don't know, maybe the story will the story will win me over to Ragnarok, but right now, like Elden Ring and God of War are on equal footing to me. And it's just the level of discovery of what I'm seeing, like the fidelity of everything I'm seeing in Ragnarok just has me intrigued. Like when that fucking whale thing came up out the water, I was like, Oh shit. Uh how the fuck did yeah, he catch yeah, that? Yeah. And like, he, the, yeah. it lifts up his fin and his, it has shackles yeah. around his fin. It's like, uh, how did Mimir even get shackles on a whale? Right? Like, uh, and yeah. like, <laughs> but like, when you go down, you, you know, you go down into the, uh, the, the caverns underneath, uh, in, in Elden Ring, you go down until that, that elevator takes forever to fucking go down. You're like, where am I going? And then you step out and you see it's a whole nother world. You're like, holy shit, I have all this to explore. And like it's fun to explore in that game, and so like they're both they're both on equal footing. But I definitely get it because you have you have more of a driving force behind you, right? Like the only the only thing they give you in Elden Ring is say, "Hey, we need an Elden Lord," and guess what? You're it, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> like there's so yeah. much driving you in in Ragnarok so far that. It, yeah, it, your relationship you're more with your engaged. son. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. You're trying to make sure your son doesn't grow up to be a little shit. Fucking, <laughs> you know, you're trying, you're trying to prevent Ragnarok. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This just they're <laughs> two very different games. I think it, it comes down to your own subjective thoughts on it. But here's, but here's another piece about God of War Ragnarok is that like Elven Ring, it just gives you like a little hint of the story. Like in Ragnarok, it does the same thing in a lot of ways. Like, it gives you little hints of a story that they will never explain to you in the game, and you'll notice it. It's like, how did this happen? It's like, where is it going? Um, there's an event at the end of the game that is going to really surprise you that has time involved, and it's it's very it's very good. Like, and now you're like, you really want to know more about the world? So, like, it never gives you an answer, like, right in your face, you know? Like, it always gives you, like, subtleties to it. The, but, the only no, no, that, there's, there's, is... there's subtlety, subtleties to that, to the main story, right? Like, the main story is happening. You're going to see the beginning, you're going to see the end, yeah. right? Fucking yeah. Elden Ring puts you at the end of the story. <laughs> the, just straight up, Elden Ring puts you at the end <laughs> of the story, and you got you to gotta figure the rest of that shit out. God of War, you started at like you started a little after the beginning, right? And you're gonna yeah. see this see this shit. Well, I'm assuming you see this shit through, right? My there are some very different takeaways in that. I think I've grown more to like storytelling, like not storytelling, but games like that since since playing getting into Destiny Two and really playing that because again, you have seasonal stories that are happening. You don't like you have a story that happened throughout the season, throughout the weeks, and then you move to the next thing, 
there's there's always there's always something moving forward. So that little tiny contained story for that season happens, and then you move on to the next one, and like the story is building on itself, and it'll eventually end. And there's tons of story that's happening within the lore books and stuff like that that you have to mm-hmm. read. Fuck all that. I'm not reading it. I'll watch a YouTube video later. But like, oh, I read. Oh, like you're talking about the. And God of War? No, no, no. I'm talking right. about like say Destiny and like all that shit. Like right. with like Elden Ring. Like if I like seriously, if I gotta, if, there's nothing to read in, in Elden Ring. There's something like a life. <laughs> yeah, like it. it'll be like, what the fuck am I supposed to get from this, right? And like, how are you pulling out all these story beats? But anyway, like if I have to, if I, if me personally, if I have to sit there and become like to write, if I have to write a dissertation and do research to figure out what your story is. I'm personally not going to do it. I will let the professionals on YouTube do it, and I will watch it. Man, they have a lot of time. Yeah, they have a lot of time to do those. <laughs> I mean, that's how they like, make their living, Elder, man. Elder, Elder Ring has been dissected left and right. And, I, and to, to a point, God of War Ragnarok has also been dissected because there's a lot of uh, unknowns in God of War Ragnarok, especially where the story is going now. And I think that's the thing that I'm most curious. I, they sold me. I'm like, I am ready for the next game. Like, I'll wait a couple of years. Got a question for you. Did yes. You, did you ever play Hades? I played Hades. Did you finish? A, did you, like... No, I didn't finish it. I wasn't that invested in it. I played it, and I... I didn't... So, like, I, I'm not a... I wasn't interested in in the gameplay. Okay, so like, so you're not you're not really into like the rogue lights where like it's permadeath and you start over and all that stuff. So like, I I do play I I played Returnal, but and and Returnal was a rogue like game, but there was a different difference in Returnal. So like, in this one, maybe it's the artistic approach, but also I think Returnal story had meaning in the return, it's like and. So... and no, okay, so like both these games, like so Hades does have a storyline that carries throughout the whole thing, right? Right. Um, it's kind of like the same. H- Hades is a horrible dad. Let's just throw that out there, yes. right? Like Hades is a horrible father, but it's him trying to protect his son. And then uh-huh. there is a whole the whole story between like that you flesh out between your runs. So even when you die the story's still progressing. So it's not like, say, it's not like Dead Cells. Like, I don't know if you've ever played yeah. that, where it's no. just like, you just start over and you go again. You start over, you go again. Like, there's you unlock different things and go whatever. But, like, you die, you go all the way back to the beginning. It, it, so you're saying that Hades' story is actually pretty decent. Yeah, Hades, it makes, there is, there. it's an underlying thread. I don't, I won't say, I would say if you don't enjoy the gameplay, don't go back and play it, right? Like, I usually don't play games that are that isometric view like that. I don't usually enjoy yeah. that. But the game, like I got really invested into the gameplay that I think for about maybe a month and some change, that was the only thing I was playing. Like I was, yeah, I was okay. like going through and like I I didn't, there is more story after you complete the game, right? So really? you, you go, you finally get out, do your thing, and then it starts you back over but there's more story to get and there's more things to do. But anyway, I say all that to say that I'm surprised that they're doing a Hades too. Hades two, Yeah. Hades. I, oh, super, why are you surprised? Super giant usually doesn't do a sequel. They usually make their game. They make a really good yeah. game. They support it for a little yeah. while and then they move on to the next thing. So I'm surprised that they're making a sequel and I'm surprised that it's, it feels like, I, I don't know exactly how to put it, but it feels like my speculation is that it's the 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 you're playing a female. I think she's the daughter of the son and Magera. I can't remember his name right now. The the son's name, but it's two characters in there that like kind of start to like at first. You know, you you get the hints that they were dating for a little bit, and then. She starts to hate him because he's constantly whooping her ass on his way out. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I fought her once. Yeah, yeah. So, I thought... but I, it makes me want to go play Hades again, and I'm kind of excited for that. And then the last game I want, I want to mention from the from the trailers 
is solely because it surprised me that they're making a game for it is Hellboy. It, it, That's right. It doesn't. It doesn't look. It doesn't look good. It doesn't. It doesn't. Look, I'm just surprised they're making a game. Like they keep trying to make Hellboy happen. Like Hellboy happened, right? Like it had its two movies and they didn't do a third. And like people were cool. Like okay, cool, whatever. I guess we're not. Gonna it, it, was, it, 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 it was a good two movies. It yeah, did, it was. Sort of and then job. you got the mediocre one with uh, David Harbor. And I was like, uh, I mean, this is passable. I'm glad I didn't pay to go see it. Like, I'm glad I like I watched it on streaming and I didn't like pay yeah. go out to the theater to go see it. But it's like, why are we getting a game? And like, if we're getting a game, why don't y'all try? Like, it doesn't look good. Like they showed it, the trailer and mm. what? Yeah. I didn't I didn't even I didn't it, like I saw that they the trailer came out, but I didn't even see it because I didn't care for it. No. I, I only I only care for honestly the only game that I really care for was Jedi Survivor. And yeah, I, we, I'm su- I'm surprised that it's coming out in Mar- like so soon. It's like March 17, 2023. And it's like wow, that's like that's that. It's not that it was fast. It's just that usually they they make big announcements like oh, not respawn. Respawn yeah. will fucking drop shit on you. Respawn yes. be like, yo, we we've been working on Titan Titanfall three. Watch, they're gonna be like, yo, we've been working on Titanfall three. It comes out tomorrow, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, respawn, respawn will just respawn, drop it on you. It, yeah, I have full respect for respawn because I, they they made some pretty decent games. Titanfall, Titanfall, and then, is that was the first so one. So good. Titanfall two was really good, and then uh, Jedi Fallen Order was like a good addition to it, and then finally Jedi Survivor's gonna the, be even better. The the time travel level in Titanfall Two is probably one of the was like, very, just really yeah, good, was very... and then like the puzzles, the jumping puzzles and stuff in Titanfall are just yes. immaculate. You're making me want to go play yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I always I, I enjoyed it a lot, especially like especially when you start getting back into the mech. Like oh, yeah. I love that transition. I love that transition when you're fly, like playing on foot, and all of a sudden you get back into the mech. And then yeah, and, uh, like. It's... I, Fucking is such a good game. I was, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm not very good at multiplayer games, but I I felt good in Titanfall Two. It's multiplayer. Like do I really not, enjoyed it. Do not step back in there now. Don't don't step back in there now, unless you want to get beat up. Oh yeah, yeah. You like there yeah. people that are playing that shit now are are a different breed. I would I wouldn't do it unless you want to get your feelings hurt, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it's true. Like there's some. Like I, I think I jumped in a couple. Of, uh, and you know, it's funny because even when I jumped in a couple of months ago, you know, you don't really forget. Uh, I think the thing that I liked about Titanfall Two over the Call of Duty games is the pacing. So oh. like Titanfall Two is fast. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking it fast. Uh, you know, like ty- like Call of Duty, you're walking or but running. See, it's Call like, of it's Duty a- is still fast though. Like Call of Duty's pace, like the the. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan fast. of it. And even like I'm I was listening, a... like I watch uh, Jack Frags on YouTube, right? Like I I watch more Water, uh, Warzone than I play. Uh-huh. Like I probably played one game, but I've watched like maybe a few hours worth of content. And <laughs> he, they were like, "Oh, it's slower. It you know, it's slower, and more methodical than you know the last Modern Warfare." And I'm like, play, like the little bit that I played, I was like, "Nah, like this feels, this still feels really fast." So I I don't know in, in my head this is a fast paced game. Yeah, it's not it's not as fast as Titanfall. Right? No, no, uh, like no, honestly, and you know, I think uh, Destiny Two is pretty fast too. Destiny they, Two they, is not. No, so not not it can it can be depending on how you build your character, right? But like if you build your character in a way like it's fast, but it's not it's not Titanfall or or COD fast. Like yeah. it's around, I've, it's around like Apex. If you play Apex at all, it's like Apex. I was so disappointed with Destiny One. Like I was so excited because it was, um, it was uh, what's this? What's this company's game? I forgot. Bungie. Uh, was comp- Bungie. It was Bungie. Uh, they just came off of Halo. I'm like, oh yeah, let's get into it. And then I played it. And I'm like, what the? Same fuck thing. Is this? So like, you know, I, it was a big deal, right? So let, let's paint this picture, right? We go back to the release of Destiny One. Now I had around like two thousand something subscribers or followers on Twitch. I'm streaming this game, and I actually got featured 
like someone told like as we're playing right someone's like yo xbox has you featured on the destiny um like playing now so i was featured on a thing i had like maybe like five six hundred people like watching and shit like that right and so you know i'm playing through it and i'm like yo what is, what is this like what am i playing right now and there was no like i'm expecting i'm expecting like you know you know science fantasy you know space warlocks and all this shit i'm expecting a story an engaging story and all that and i didn't get any of that i got i got the you know the quick low down dirt i'm like yo i just beat the game what am i supposed to be doing what i didn't realize at the time was that this was a a, a constant thing that you're supposed to be engaged with and play and play and play or whatever right you know this concept is new to me like i like i've never been into mmos you know anything like that so people are like this is an mmo light type game you know you grind you get gear um they release different stories and expansions and there's all this other stuff going on destiny one to me was a letdown until i started to play destiny two <laughs> and so like i'm like I yeah I, I, I played the introduction of Destiny 2 and I was I found it so boring. I found like the gameplay so boring in Destiny 2. I'm like, uh, they, apparently, apparently they made updates where now it's really good. And if you say, it seems like, like you say the gameplay. So my question to you would be, is it the shoot like the shooting in Destiny 2 feels really good? Right? Is it the the act of the actual game where you're playing, so or is I, it what I, you're so doing? I, I, so in the introduction, I don't think the introduction was really good because I found the enemies too easy. So yeah, like so, they, they, yeah they, it's supposed to be. Like yeah. in, in, uh, in the introduction, I found the enemies too easy and you can't change the difficulty either. Mm -mm. So I found, I found it really boring and I was playing it with a friend and we're like, oh my God, we're falling asleep here because it's a long mission. It's like, it's a long introduction. And to the point where like at that point, it was, like we put, we continue playing it, and all the beginning missions are relatively easy. So like I I didn't find any joy in the story. Yeah. And so I play I I play so I jumped so like I did a jump right I jumped in and like some of the DLC something beyond light or something to that effect, and I'm listening to the conversation. Like granted, I I I can follow through with it because I read a lot of the the lore, uh, but. The way that it was acted, it just I couldn't get sucked into it because it was just so terribly acted. I'm like, oh my god, who are these voice actors? So I, I, my friend and I were like, I'm working, we're done. We are absolutely done. I applaud anybody that enjoys it. Go for you guys, but I'm like, I so bad on, voice on the, acting on and the difficulty, gameplay. right? So on the difficulty, like when a Destiny One first, well, Destiny Two first came out. It wasn't necessarily like the the main campaign that would present the difficulty. It was different missions. So like back then, it would be like the Nightfall. So now they have like Grandmaster Nightfalls and stuff like that, raids, things of that nature. So it's different activities that present the difficulty. So the story, like you do like a story mission. So like the most recent ones was like the Witch Queen, right? You do the Witch, Witch Queen story missions. Now they're making it to where you can add difficulty to it. But before they wouldn't have difficulty. You just kind of going through it, get the gear at the yeah. end, and then that kind of levels levels you up, and you can participate in some higher level things. So the difficulty now is like you can up the difficulty now, but like the game will hand you your at like. So right now they're in, in this season, they're the seasonal missions or whatever, right? I like I was treating it like last season where like I can just hop in, do this shit and get the gear from it. I kept dying. Mind you, I've been playing this shit since like I've been playing this for, since 2017. Like I, 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 I have some experience, right? I'm not as good as like some people, but like I, I think I know what I'm doing. I kept getting my ass handed to me. I'm like, OK, wait, I got to go back and actually like get gear and think about my build mm -hmm. and do this and then like play this. Like, I can't just shoot my way through it. I got to actually think about what I'm doing. So, like, the difficulty isn't necessarily in setting, like, easy, normal, hard. It's, you know, okay, my light level is 1560, and this is a 1580, uh, this is a 1580 power level uh, mission. Can I even do this? 
And that's where the difficulty comes in. So like, again, it's, it's a different structure. It requires a lot of it, it. It requires a lot of you if you actually want to play into it and get to the end game stuff. That that's yeah. that's that's my biggest. That's the biggest thing for me. It's because like you go to work, you come back, you got shit you got to do, and then the game wants you to spend six hours just to get to like a a, a different level of, of the content. So that that's my issue right now. But- so like I. Speaking of that, like I, I've noticed one thing about me. I like this Black Friday. I got like seven games. So I got Ratchet and Clank, uh-huh. uh, the new one, Rift Apart. I got Sifu. I got the. Uh, I got um, Call of Duty, uh, Cold War, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I got Mafia, the original one, but it updated. I never played the original Mafia. I got a lot of games, right? And all of a sudden, I I play God of War Ragnarok, and I feel like none of this will ever. Like, I, I realized then that I spent so much money because I just want to replay God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> and that's that's what makes a great game, but also that's what, that's a lot, what allowed me to think about, like, do I really want to have two systems now? Right? Yeah. Do I really, and... And another thing is that like these like these games that take forever to be right like do I really want to go through that because there's so many other games that I want to play? Yeah, it's as you you know, and I definitely something I think about too. Right, it's like as you get older, what am I going to put my time into? Right, like what am I going to like? I know, I know, going into it that Red Dead, I bought it. I bought the game, but you know, I bought it kind of on a on a on a gray market because uh, I was like, I don't want to pay full price for this, right? Because if I don't like it again, I don't want to have don't want to have had drop you know full price on it. So you know, it's like time versus the amount of money that I'm spending on it. Like I bought. So, like, during this, these recent sales, I bought Cyberpunk, Narita Boy, Doom Eternal. Um, I didn't buy COD, but I bought, like, one other game. I can't remember what it is right now. But, like, so I plan on going through Cyberpunk, but I know it's, a, I know it's a, an investment of time. So, like, it's like, okay, I got this game, but when the fuck am I actually going to play it? You know what I mean? Like, I have it, so at some point in the future... I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for it, but I still got, I still haven't yeah. beat the Witcher. So you, you and, get what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and again, it like playing God of War Ragnarok made me think about like, I need to be wiser in the games that I buy Yeah, because those that's money invested, right? So you're going to want to play those games because it's money investment, but do I really need to play them? No, I mean, we don't need, we don't need to play any uh, of it. Right. Yeah. Like that, like, well, so like in terms of the gamer, right? Like, did I really need to buy the call of duty called cold war? I'm not a fan of like call of duty. Uh, I'm not, but I like, sometimes man, you got to see that itch. Yeah. But modern warfare two, it seems like there were some, updates to the game and like graphically like that there are some things that people are saying like wow this looks really good so i'm like you know let me play the first one first so i can understand a little the story a little bit better uh, so yeah i got i i did that i'm like do i really needed that uh i what i really want to do is when i was young when I, like there were so many like there there weren't a lot of games right like when, when you were younger like the options to the, the video games that were really good were Fee and far in between. So you used to replay those really good games and you were fine with that. Um, I felt the same way with Ragnarok when I played it. I'm like, you know what? I, I could replay this, no problem. And But now I have all this fucking arsenal of, yeah. of games that I need so to play. I think, like, like, I think that's a good point, right? Is like, you know, when you're young, you have all the time in the world and no money. Right, <laughs> like you have no money to buy the games that you want, so you buy you you like stop and you you buy these games and you spend all these time this time with it. Like say when you played Final Fantasy VII for the first time, and you spent all yeah. this time on Legend of Dragoon or Metal Gear Solid, and you spent all this time playing through it, 
and like all the new thing cranny. Yeah, man. You, <laughs> you 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 know people that speed run a game. It speed running. I like. I'm pretty sure speed. Like I'm wrong on this, but in my head, speed running happened because somebody only owned one fucking game, and they're like, "Yo, I wonder how fast can I beat Mario." You know what I mean? Like, because it's the only game they had. Shit was like 80, 90 bucks back then. You know what I mean? Like, let me let me just go ahead and this is the only game I have on my Nintendo. And so, like, now we're older. We don't have as much time, but we have money and we want to play more. Right? Like, damn. Because, like, in my head, like, I bought Doom Eternal because I was like, I want to play, I want to try playing a first-person shooter on my Steam Deck. I want to see what that experience is like. And since I can't fucking play Destiny 2 on there like I want to, I guess I'm going to play Doom. And so that's why I bought Doom Eternal, so I can play it on my Steam Deck. Hey, friend. Hey. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so anyway, where, where were we? I don't know, man. Well, in the video, and in the video games, yeah, we were talking about video games and we were talking about time. And we were if you were upset that we we have all the money. Yeah, oh, you, no, you, have, you, have, you have the money now, <laughs> man. Like you have the money, and but you don't you don't really have the time that that you used to have. You know what I mean? You, yeah. Like for me, like it like it's so night and day because like I had time before, but then I had a kid and like all that changes, man. Like even even yeah. after you know moving out and like I I don't have her half the time. Yeah, I still don't have time, and that's wild. That is fucking what like that makes no sense. <laughs> it makes it makes absolutely yeah. no sense. Even like being over here where I think today is probably the first day where I've spent as much time just gaming as I have. Um I haven't spent like it's been such a long time where I've spent I've been I I I gamed over 8 hours today. That's fucking wow. I have not done that in a long, long time. So, I mean, like, it, it's a great feeling. You know, it's, it's it's interesting, too, because, like, I don't I don't usually play eight hours, um, even even when I do have the time. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that God of War Ragnarok, like, <laughs> it's like, it's one of those games, man. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sleeping. I'm like thinking about it. It's like, oh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's. It's like I haven't felt like this in a long time, and I'm really, I really enjoyed it. I really, I really feel like, like, like video games. Sometimes you feel like you wasted your time. Mm -hmm. um, like I played Scarlet Nexus. I, the gameplay was good, um, but the storyline and the voice acting was horrendous. So I'm like, you know what? It's an anime I game. Just, it's yeah, a, it's, it, a, it's I, an you anime know, game. I, like you don't play, you don't play that for any story. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, like again, like I, I fall into these traps, like Persona Five, um, then Scarlet Nexus, the other one I forgot even the, the name that I, that I was playing. Um, I think it's because uh, Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles uh, really spoiled me because Xenoblade Chron Chronicles has a really good story. Yeah, I heard and like I Xenoblade really Chronicles Three is like really fucking good. Yeah, it was nominated for best best, best game. Yeah, and I, yeah. I knew it wasn't gonna win because it's it's competing against Ragnarok and Elden Ring. It was not gonna win. Yeah, which is which is unfortunate, man. Because I like that. Like I I've heard nothing but great things about that game. I've heard nothing yeah, but great things yeah. about it. So yeah, so I'm excited. So so I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles two again. Okay. Um, and I'm almost done with that. You play three. I, I've been. Obviously, I already bought it. Like, you you bought it. Bought it. I bought. I bought the DLC, but at the same time, I, I, I love the second one so much that I wanted to like give it one, one last go uh -huh. before I jump into the third one. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm telling you, like good story. So if you have good story, good music, and good voice acting, I'm sold. Because I played Plague's Tale, Requiem. Yeah. God damn, that game was tragic. It was such a good game. Okay. Mind you, I, I, I wasn't so I wasn't so enamored with the gameplay, but I was enamored with the storyline and the relationship that the the main character had with her brother. It was 
it was sad and it was uh it was it was also kind of scary i i i, I gotta admit <laughs> they did a good job and, and one thing that i, I do notice too it i i kind of wish that we, we've been seeing a lot of um lately we've been seeing a lot of like the like women uh, women or, or male actors so male a male protagonist is either like have a strong relationship with their supporting uh female co-star or a supporting uh, male co-star i kind of wish there was a stronger relationship with uh female leads and male characters so like a lot of times in the these female leads they they make it seem like they're too independent to to even to even have a strong like another strong male character, but there's certain vulnerabilities that I would like to see in, as I'm playing it, like I saw in. But the relationship between sister and brother is a little bit different than than relationship between uh, mom and son or female and a male relationship i don't see a lot of i don't, I don't see a lot of women in strong leading positions to have a romantic relationship with a male figure i think so like a lot of times a lot of times you know when you have like if there is a relationship present right i know for me like in a movie where it feels like the relationship was shoot horn in right? Like it kind of takes away, like there's this moment where they stop and they kiss and it's like, the fuck was that? Right? Like we're in a moment of like life and death. Y'all stop to talk about your fucking feelings and kiss, right? Like that doesn't seem appropriate, right? I feel like there should be like the right, like whoever's writing the story, like really needs to take into account, like the relationships that they're building with that. Right, like in a video game, I think it would be yeah, feasible I think, because a video game is like, well. like you take that time, you know? yeah, like where you can you can take that time to like really flesh out that relationship. I, like, yeah, I definitely like if you're talking about exploring relationships, exploring different characters, yeah, like I'm all for it, right? Like to have a female lead, like even it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. I think if you can depict, you can depict people, you know a female and a male that are just friends, right? And that have a relationship that has its ups and downs, but they're still friends. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's worth something. I Like, uh, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it, but in um, Clint, you know, Hawkeye and Black Widow's relationship was a good one in, 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 in the Avengers movies. Uh, because but it wasn't because, fleshed out it wasn't fleshed out no anyway. but like i can appreciate it because there's no they just genuinely cared for each other they had a relationship a, a healthy relationship with each other where they cared for each other's well-being and i would like to see that i would like to see that in, game. in, in, a, in a game right where yeah. that whether it doesn't matter to me what gender the protagonist is but if you're able to show that, hey, you know, a, a relationship between a man and woman does not have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be sexual. Like men and women can be friends and they can't care for each other and they can't have an intimate relationship that doesn't rely on what people say, like, you know, it has to rely on. I, I would I'm all for right, it. But 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 I think my 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 thing is that in games, there is no female to male no, romantic relationship. I don't I don't not that I can remember. Yeah. Nothing nothing that and like not nothing that's been like triple A. No. Yeah, like like it maybe maybe in, in games like Mass Effect and in Inquisition there is romantic relationships, but it's 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 not it's not as fleshed out because it's it's an RPG, right? Yeah, so like in a story driven yeah. game like God of War or Uncharted. Uncharted has Uncharted four was all about the relationship between uh, Nathan Drake and his wife, you know, it, but I would like to see like a difference where instead of having Nathan Drake as a main character and in, in a relationship with his wife, I would like to see a female character in her relationship with her husband or someone 
or, or, or someone that is developing a relationship. Yeah. So I thought I was disappointed with Tomb Raider because um, all this time, I'm not sure if you played the. I didn't the, play. I haven't played Tomb the last Raider. one. So like this is this this I, this guy I I think he's a. Uh, uh, He's Pacific I, I Islander. Forget. Yeah, he's uh, uh yeah, Pacific. Yeah, I know Pacific. I, I, and he keeps coming out in games. I, I thought in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the last one, you could you could finally see something coming out of it, but there really wasn't none. And, and in actuality, they really pushed him to the side a lot of times. Yeah, I'm like, I I kind of want to, I want to explore that, and I, I kind of I'm kind of tired of this. Uh, this trope that we're having that uh, like this female his character name is Jonah completely independent uh-huh. yeah this female character needs to be completely independent and can't rely on anybody else I'm like I mean God of War he's fucking a God of War and he relies on the sun and he relies on other people too so in the story I think with uh in Tomb Raider in Tomb Raider Laura is like that to a fault and people pointed out to her and that was in the, at least in the two games that I've played, they say that it's like, you know, like Laura, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not necessarily like, I don't need anybody and I can do this all by myself. And then she goes and she does it by herself. Like she does it, but it's more of like, I need to do this. And she's not thinking about anybody else. And it's, it's detrimental to her and her relationships. Yes, that is true. So, and I, I, and I don't necessarily. I disagree with the the director and how he chose it, but I would have still liked yeah. a deeper relationship between Jonah and her. Something that wasn't shown. Yeah, like it was alluded to, but it wasn't really shown. And in in Horizon Zero Dawn, you play as a female character, but most of the time she's alone. She's doing things by herself, and like, there's not so, really a sort of relationship that's being created I between. The I, two. I watched maybe like a little bit of streams on on the newest one, right? And somebody was saying that one of the NPCs was obviously hitting on her, and she kind of acted like, like I don't like no, the world is about to end, right? Like, like taken aback, like so wrapped up. And what she had going on that she was like, no, I don't, I don't have time for whatever you're trying to do right now. I, I, I can't get into it. And like, I, I want to play it. I, I need to play like the newest one. Yes. But again, like you're right, but we're just making excuses. No, yeah, male no figures, male, male figures are like are going through the same shit and they don't go like, I am sorry. Excuse like me. I <laughs> do, I do feel, I do feel like, at, like, I'm just saying that there's like a, there's it doesn't need to be. Around. I don't. I, I would like to see it. Like if, like, say, The Last of Us was a uh, like Joel, the character of Joel was female instead of male, right? And we we would have got that, would... that. I I feel like that could have been a strong a strong uh, relationship, showing a strong relationship between those two. But, like, it's not something that I've ever, you know, like, you bringing this up is something making me realize, like, I've never seen that. Like, when I brought up the fact that I think Forspoken is, like, the first, like, triple A level game with the black female protagonist, right? You know. She's by herself. She's, <laughs> yeah, know, she's can... by herself. But, like, <clears throat> you know, when, you know, I thought about it, because, like, somebody was, like, you know, people were talking about representation in games and stuff like that. I was like, when's the last time I played as a just a black voiced female character or she's the main protagonist in the game? It's not made from like a creative character where they're, they're, you know, like or anything like that, like a story driven, you know, game. And I can't remember one. So then it's mm -hmm. like, OK, well. Forspoken is that. So, yeah, I'll check out Forspoken, see what it's like, you know, kind of be like, well, hey, I want to see. I, I like that's a character that I want to see that I want to explore that I want to see what kind of experiences that they're able to come up with. So like even what yeah, you what I, you brought up just now like that interest like I never thought about that before and so that interests me. It's like well yeah like I I want to see that you know like even you know I, I'll go so far at, like with exposure I think this is something like a lot of people don't don't realize right like where people get upset that you know oh you know 
they they're they're taking men out of the a game or media or they're taking you know they're swapping a race and this character wasn't this race before but like exposure exposure to something breeds interest in it you know what i mean like what people don't realize is that like something say like remember the movie 10 commandments with charlton hessen i think that's his name his name you remember that old movie mm-hmm. like a lot of people you know like that's moses to them that story is how the 10 commandments happen now it's if that's true or not you know we don't know but like you get what i'm saying like that like entertainment builds people's frame of reference for things and so i want to see more and different people like lead these different stories so that you know it can build a bigger frame of reference for people exactly i again i i, I saw the so I, I got the idea we got a war right so they got a war ragnarok you see kratos and i, I really enjoy kratos story and i also really enjoyed his relationship with his son um, but there is, there have been other games where we have like strong relationships between um, uh, a male, uh, male character that has a strong relationship with a female supporting character, or strong relationship with a male supporting character. Mm-hmm. I don't see that a lot with women, and I want to see that because, like, women and like have a different um, emotion to show in the table. Especially imagine having a, a, a female lead taking care of her son or a female lead taking care of, of a boy or something. To that yeah. That's where Amicia and, and Plague, Plague still came into picture because it was a female lead taking care of her little brother. And I'm like, I wish we had a, a more of this type of relationship than just having a like a I am a loner. <laughs> I do this by myself. You know, yeah. I, I want to see more of those types of story. Not, not I don't want to just see it on Drake or Kratos. I want to see it with women too. I think women would have, like, I think it would make such a great story because they have so much to bring in the table. Something that we probably not used to. Yeah, I, I think there's some story opportunities there. So, we are approaching an hour 45 minutes. And so I want to close yeah. this out in asking you, have you seen Black Panther Wakanda forever? I have not. Yo, what are you doing uh, with your life? Where are your priorities I, at, I, man? I, What's I, going I, on? I, I have not. I, so like, I haven't gone to movies that much. I haven't even, I didn't even see Black Adam, obviously, but I, I guess like Wakanda forever, I, I just, by the way, I, I'm I'm sure you've heard it's, it's, uh, Ru- Suri, I believe. Yeah, I watched it. I, I know. Sh- I, I watched yeah. it. Shuri, I told you. I told you that she yeah. was going to be Black Panther. And I also told you that they were going to bring his sickness into the movie. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Uh, so, like, before the movie came out, they, they kind of said that. Like, they were going to bring, like, they were going to mm-hmm. work his death into the movie. So, like, I yeah. knew that was coming. I figured, like, in my head, my head kind of, I figured it was going to be Shuri, but, like, I also, like, disconnected from all, from all the uh, media stuff and projections people were making, because I wanted to be surprised. I think, I think, um, I, 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 it, Wakanda Forever is just me taking a break from the MCU. So, like, I didn't go see it because I'm taking a break from the MCU. Yeah. I'm also taking, I'm taking a break from, uh, it just like the fact that I'm, I'm not ready to accept that there's another Black Panther, so I I, t- I try to stay away from it just because I'm not ready. I'm not ready to accept that. So uh, maybe in the future I will. In my but in my opinion, in my opinion, right? Um, I honestly feel like Black Panther: Wakanda Forever is a better movie than the first one. Not because it necessarily does anything better, but because of the circumstances of the the making of the movie, right? So there are some. I don't know if you you've heard people talk about, um, you know, Angela Bassett's performance or uh, yes. Shuri's performance or any every everyone's performance is so 
strong in that movie where like they give because there's there's genuine grief behind the words that are coming out of their mouth They're, for the the actor that played T'Challa for Chadwick Boseman like what they're saying is genuine grief and so the struggles that they're going through with just his passing in the movie and then the threat of Namor and like what he's bringing and it's like they're trying to deal with all that I feel that it's a better movie because you got just such a better performance out of everybody because of you know Chadwick Boseman's death and like I think I think that's it's a testament to his impact on them and then their impact on the movie. You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you just have a better movie because they were trying to give their absolute best in making it. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that all these movies are going to be great or anything like that, but it's definitely one of like, for me, it is better than the original. I think black Panther Wakanda forever is better than black Panther just because like, so much of it makes makes more sense to me. You get what I'm saying? The 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 conflicts that they're having with each other, the conflicts that they're having with uh the uh the, well, Talokan. Like the city's called Talokan, but what 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 would the people be called? <laughs> right? <laughs> but like you, you get what I'm saying, like the more people yeah. versus the Wakandans and uh, you're like, well like th there's conflict there. But I have I have my issues with the movie. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil any of that for you. I do have my issues with the movie because I really feel like some things that happened didn't need to, and it ended in the same result. So like, what are we what are we doing here? But at the same time, I feel like there were some performances given that just like it's like holy shit, like these these people no, no, yeah I, like, I heard it's, it's, i heard i heard great thing when you get I ready for it, about it when you get ready for it i i i you know sit down get your little tissue box Maybe, get yeah. your tissue box because you're gonna cry like four or five times a <laughs> I, movie. I think i think i'm <laughs> uh, for me like not watching wakanda forever is my way of protesting that like i was not approving uh phase four of marvel and so you could you could you could have did that on thor right uh Thor Love and Thunder, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should have did that a movie ago. <laughs> no, like I should have I should have done that. I should have done that with Doctor Strange. So like I saw Doctor Strange came before that and I didn't think that Doctor Strange was that great of a movie. It is, but it's okay. Um, and you didn't like no, it? No, I, I liked, liked it? it. I liked it, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of people didn't. I, no, a lot, a lot of people didn't. People it's, it's 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 yeah. divisive. It, I I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a, again, it's this is the direction that Marvel wants to go. That's fine. I, I'm just not going to support it. It's like what I did with Ragnarok, right? I bought the game uh, months before because I wanted to support it. I'm just not supporting Marvel in this case. If I see something good, that like if I see a path that they're doing really good, it's like then I'll start supporting it again with TV series. I saw She Hulk, wasn't a fan of it. Uh, I saw Miss Marvel. I told you about it. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of it either. Yeah. It's like, okay, this I'm not. I'm not a fan. You know what? What I was very surprised about was uh, uh, Lucas film and the direction that they're going with. I haven't watched. Series. I haven't so watched I saw, Andor yet. I heard Andor. So I good. saw it. I saw Andor, and I will say that it is the best series in Disney Plus. Yeah, right? that's what I keep hearing. Hands up. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah, the best. Series. So. Close yeah. this out. We put put the two things yeah. out here. Closing this out, I just want to bring up the last little thing. Did you see how Warner Brothers canceled just a bunch of DC movies? Oh. Yo, are they actually? Uh, are they actually? So like, I I don't understand if they're actually canceling because I'm a little bit confused with everything. So at first they're saying that Henry Cavill is coming up. And then they're saying, but now they're like, it's up in the air whether Henry Campbell is actually going to be Superman. I, I mean, like, what is going on with Warner Brothers? Uh, like, so, I, I saw that. Okay. I saw that John Campia show, and they were saying something to the effect that 
they're thinking of a hard reboot, like a hard reboot, right? So, but if they're if they're doing a hard reboot, what's happening with the movies that are coming out in twenty twenty? I don't know. Like they're just gonna look, just like that. it feels like okay. So anything they do with the Flash movie could hard reboot everything. It could soft reboot it or hard reboot it, right? So they're talking about Aquaman. The next Aquaman movie is canceled. The Wonder Woman movie was not canceled. Uh, Patty, what's her name? Patty Jenkins, I think her name is. She walked off. They told her to change this. Yeah, so yeah, they, they told her to change this. Yeah, she did. She did her treatment for it. They didn't like the direction that she was going. Which, mind you, after Wonder Woman eighty four, watching, I would have been the same way. I've been I, like, yo, I'm not really yeah. feeling this. But you know, she walked off. So basically, that's effectively canceled. Man of Steel 2 is canceled. Man of Steel 2 is actually no. canceled. But I don't know so, if they're God. recasting Henry Cavill. I don't know. Like, nobody so, said anything about that yet. So, I, Aquaman 2 is not canceled. Aquaman 2 is still coming out because if they made Aquaman 2. No. But, they, like, it, it would be, it, it's going to be, it's going to be the last one for Jason the No. No. No, I'm telling you, Aquaman 2 is not canceled. Aquaman 2 is going to be the, I think it's going to be the last one. Oh, they canceled the spinoff. Okay, the trench. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, we yeah, yeah, got, yeah. got that cleared. And there was never officially announced that I, it was never officially announced that Man of Steel 2 is coming out. So, that's, yeah, so it's like, that, a, that's, it's, it's a, you know, but whatever they do decide to do, they can start it all. Because, like, through all this, through all this, Ezra Miller hasn't been fired, and they haven't canceled the Flash movie. Through everything that man has done, they have not canceled the Flash I movie, think, and they have not fired him. I think it's, I think the thing, thing from my understanding is that the Flash movie is actually really it good. It probably, it probably <laughs> really is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's what I understand it. Like it, like it's it's really good because it's made by a really good director. I, I forget his name, but apparently it made an impression in Warner Brothers that were like, Well, okay, well this is this is a moneymaker. It could be a potential moneymaker. Yeah. And I'm gonna see it, regardless of Ezra Miller's acts. Um But it I I I was very surprised with Warner Brothers. Now I that being said, this comes to mind Henry Cavill, right? Like Henry Cavill left The Witcher. Now people are assuming that Henry Cavill left The Witcher because he was going to enroll now in Superman. But my understanding is that Henry Cavill left The Witcher because it's not following the storyline of the so. Anymore. I would take that with a grain of salt. I mean, that's what people keep saying, right? But n none of that's really come out, like. They like I from my understanding, he had a lot to say about the character of Geralt, right? And that they kept trying to make him the angry man and Geralt Geralt is a you know amateur philosopher philosopher, right? And that mm -hmm. he has a lot more to give than what they were giving, like what they were making him into. So I know he had a lot of issues with that, but again, I, I would say like I even don't know. The Witcher three, like yeah. Even when the Witcher, the Witcher three, he was a very big philosopher. Like he, he, amateur, I was like, he puts on, he puts on the you know tough and gruff, but it, it melts away kind of quick, right? It like that, yeah, that, yeah, because, that melts away kind of quick, and I, I feel like maybe he got kind of tired of fi fighting that, but again, like even people were saying that like the writers, the writers. Openly, exactly. openly exactly. said that like the producer, the ex producer, the producer, the producer came out and said I didn't say that. Producer said like the person accusing her of that is an ex writer of The Witcher, right? She was like, I love them, they do great work, but I never said that. I just read that today before we got on. So it's like like a lot of this, a lot of this shit is rumors, and so it's like you. What's sad about it is like we'll never know. Right. I yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna subscribe to like he probably got tired of trying to like get a better better story out of it. And a lot of people are saying like this isn't as good as the books. You you guys should just follow the books. I I hey, it's true, like season two of The Witcher, it, it was I think it was even 
it wasn't as good as season one. And season one was a mixed bag, right? And, but we saw potential of it, and then we get season two, and we're like, I think what is this? I think I'm 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 very easy to please, right? Because I just enjoyed it, right? Like I just thoroughly fucking enjoyed it. I so I, I enjoyed it. I. But at the same time, when like when even my wife is saying like, ah, it's simply, it wasn't as good as season one. And it's like, and season one was a mixed bag, right? Because I enjoyed the shit out of season yeah. one. But a lot of people had complaints with the timeline. Um, season two was supposed to rectify that. And, but it was just like, even Geralt was, like, was barely there. I don't know if you noticed, Geralt was not the focus. And no, it was, it was mostly multi- the witches. Like, yeah, yeah. I I don't know like the way they did it the way they had the timelines I under like I understood what was going on I knew that we were in different points of time right like I'm talking about season two like I'm talking about yeah season, season yeah yeah season two season season two had like, it's, it's, barely had anything it's, to do with like and I'm not trying to defend it or anything like that what what I'm trying to say is like from the way that I was watching it is that it's a TV show and they're just showing a different expect uh, perspective right there there are times where the main character will drop out of view or they'll pan, you know, they'll pan to a different person. Like in God of War, in this very quick scene where you yeah. over Atreus, right? And you have this quick little adventure with Atreus. Now they're, you know, Metal Gear Solid 2 did it and a lot of people hated it when, you know, initially where, you know, you were playing that snake at first and then bam, you're riding, right? And so right. like, I, that's just how I saw it. So I don't. Right, I, right in was just a bad character. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we ain't going there though. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's so, it's sad to see him. So leave and, 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 and or, and or, if you see the show, Andor, like not you're absolutely right. There's there are different stories that are going on, but Andrew overall is the main story. Um, and everything revolves around him, whereas Geralt is. I feel like Geralt is treated like a side character. I think the story in, in is more two. about the world. You get what I'm saying? Like they're like, if you watch, did you watch House of the Dragon yet? No, I haven't. So I, I, I will. So I like House of the Dragon. Is- it's a really good show. It's so good. I hand, like it is like season one of this show but, is better than season one of Game of Thrones. So, but my understanding is that House of the Dragon, like Game of Thrones, it's like there's no there's no main, main character. character. So, like, yes, right. the show so, is called. Yes, the, I understand the, the, the show is called The Witcher. Right. You get what I'm saying? But like a lot of what he he's he's intertwined. He's the he's the glue holding that holding that story together. Right just now, like, it's a it, like I'm telling you, it's the fucking witches. Like they should have just called it the witches. Yeah, instead, I, like, because the witches but, are the ones that. But again, like. That's how I just viewed the the thing is that they're just showing me a perspective of what's going on outside of that. Carol will show up later, but that's how I saw it. So like I get like so people have more I always, people have a more critical I eye than do. I do, and so I I am yes. willing to be like, hey, I don't have a problem with it, but I understand where you're coming from. If a show is going to be successful, I mean, there's certain, there's certain things that you just you need to piece. Some people, most people, right? So, like, yeah, you're easy to go with, but yeah, I, other people are like, no. Nah. It, it takes you a know, lot of like, work for me to be like, yo, this is bad, which, you know, like, I will say, like, I do find some things bad, like Alter Carbon Season 2. As much as I love Anthony Mackie, that Season 2 was horrible. Horrible Season 2. I, mean, I haven't even seen Don't it. Don't watch I mean, it. I haven't even seen it. I saw, I saw Wednesday. Wednesday was really good. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I haven't seen it. Wednesday is actually really funny. Um, really good, but yeah, I, I I I'm I'm sad to see Henry Cavill go. I'm even sadder to see that. I think so. I was listening to a podcast in IGN that said like Henry Cavill's departure may mean a bigger departure for the whole Witcher series. And what they were trying to say is that there, the Henry Cavill's departure means that the Witcher is departing more from its original storyline in the books. It's like and. Like Game of Thrones, you can, you know, you can expand, you can change some things, but the direction should overall kind of be the same. And this one, it feels like they're actually just yeah, nixing the whole story so, and just going their own way. I know, like, when, when you put it that way, right, um, House of the Dragon has moments, like, that are different from the book and how they're presented, right? But the book itself says, like, hey these are coming from these kind of people and you have the expectation that these people could be either embellishing 
um, adding to taking away from the story. And the the show is showing you the true events of the story, right? So so and so in 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 the thing, it'd be like, yo, you know, he you know he had sex with her in the brothel, but in in the show, you find out that they don't. You get what I'm saying? So it's like this this thing of where you see the real events and it departs away from the book and it, it's portraying, you get different portrayals of, of certain characters, but it's still overall all the same, the same direction. So yeah, I, I definitely get it. Like that, that TikTok I sent you of the guy basically saying like, yeah, just stick to the story at this point, you know? And, and like, I kind of feel like, man, like, should I be reading the books if the stories are this good, right? Because I'm okay with the story that I'm getting from the shows, you know, would I be, would I have, I, I guess, would I have the same outlook on these, uh, on these shows if I had went and read the book, you get what I'm saying? I, I, I think that's, so that's I, a big I, takeaway for me. I mean, so like in, in the first Witcher, I liked it a lot because a lot of the same stories mm -hmm. were very similar to the, to the chapter. So like, so like the first book of the Witcher is actually short stories mm -hmm. and those episodes were the short stories and tell like, that's why it was mixed in timeline. And I enjoyed that in the second season. I'm like, what is going, like, what's going on? Like I couldn't, I, I couldn't follow it in. And a lot of it was just a lot of hand waving. A lot of it wasn't really explaining. So here's the problem with doing your own path. It's like, and in, in doing your own path completely and mixing it, like you think that you're writing a good story, right? But a lot of it doesn't make any sense because there's no explanation for it. It's like you have to do the, you that, have to do the groundwork to 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 yeah, to Jennifer, do that. yeah. Yeah, Jennifer, 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 uh, Jennifer, 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 for example, and the interaction that she had with the witch, and like that's new to the story, right? That's not in the books, but it was, it wasn't really explained at all. It was like done, right? Um, whereas if they would have just followed the book and done like like a, a little bit more investing on like the explanation of it, like game of Thrones before season eight and season nine, you know, because before season seven, yeah. season six, uh, game of Thrones started to get bad before season eight. Yes. Yeah, so, so, season seven was bad. Season six was good. I like season six. So, season six was the last, the last hurrah. What the battle yeah. of the bastards? I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to get you sidetracked. I just whatever episode, whatever season where uh, Arya got stabbed in the stomach with a really long knife and didn't die. That that's where the show started to go bad. But yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> My point is like they're they're invent, reinventing the wheel so completely and deviating it off so much that they're putting things in front of the characters without explanation and it doesn't uh it doesn't serve the the, the story well because there's too many parts missing so they get from a so to b what it sounds what it sounds the, the like content, it's not necessarily the content is so thin it's not necessarily that they're deviating from the story it's that they're not doing any legwork to get where they're trying to go Exactly. So they could deviate from the story, but they're not doing things within one. They're not laying, staying, probably staying true to the character. Or two, again, they're not putting down the groundwork to to get where they're going. And, so yeah, I, I got. And you. I think that's yeah. A, yeah, and that's what happened with Game of Thrones. They didn't put the legwork to to fill all those gaps. They dependent. They didn't dependent on their own authorship. It's like that, that's just a you know, good story. You, like, I could it do wasn't this. even that. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm. So like, it came out that HBO was like, "Hey, you know, how many seasons do you guys need? We'll make sure y'all have the funding. Just let us know." And they were like, two. and they're like, "You sure?" And they're like, "Yeah, we got this." They ain't have it. You know what I mean? Like, they there was some work that had to like at the end of season one of House of the Dragon, right? You know why like why some of the characters are gonna go the route they go. You know why, you know, 
they're going to be upset, why they're going to kill people, why they're going to go mad. You know that. You see that. There was no reason for Daenerys to, like, they they didn't do that work. Like, oh, no. I, you know, yeah, people exactly. told me no. People have been telling you no your whole fucking life. Why would you? What, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they they, they right tried to that. shortcut it. They tried to shortcut it and just end it. I think me personally, I think they were so, tired. They were just ready to be done with Game of so, Thrones. Yeah, so so for me, Game of Thrones, the problem is that they, they they didn't have the content, right? So I can understand some of it, right? If you don't want to put the light work, I get I get it. Like you didn't have the content. There's no excuse for the Witcher. The books <laughs> have already been written. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> So, like, if you don't want to put the, get, yeah, the right books, yeah. that's fine, but you have the books that you can rely on. Yeah, true. Which makes your job way easier. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm still going to watch season so, three. Um, we'll see yeah, course, We'll see where season like... four goes. I mean, I'm I'm probably going to watch it um, because I'm paying for Netflix. And, I mean, I just want to see if it, you know, if, how how off the rails it goes. You know what I mean? I mean, if it, if season three is garbage, then I'm just not going to watch it anymore. But yeah, that's the plan. If if season three is garbage, then we completely understand why Harry Cavill left. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is this this is bad oh, rap. Oh, this is why. Oh, okay. This makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, but I am. You know, I, I'm a little bit sad with the Snyderverse being canceled. I'm not. So you can't. I I enjoy the lot the the Zack Snyder's Justice League. I enjoy. I enjoy. It. And yeah, so it's I, not I, necessarily. I, and I feel. Go ahead. Go ahead. I feel bad. I feel bad because they could have like even though like it was. It was kind of directed wrong. 1984 was terrible. I think I think they were trying to just not focus on the Snyderverse, but they had. They had something cool going on. Like, I think they, I think the Underneath Warner Brothers interacted. All those. I, I think Warner Brother. I think Warner Brothers interacted too much with Zack Snyder's work. Mm-hmm. It's like Zack Snyder wanted to do Man of Steel too, and then Warner Brothers was like, "No, we want you to put Batman down." Anyway, okay, it's fine. Well, I'll put Batman versus Superman, and then like, no, now we want you to do. Justice League, you know, like God damn it. So there wasn't really a character build up of Superman, but I still think that the premise of Superman becoming evil, like in Injustice, is a good idea. It's like imagine it's the been, world's I mean, greatest superhero. It, it hasn't been done on film with it, it hasn't been done on film with Superman exactly, but we get evil super exactly. we've had two evil Superman in the last what two, three years. We've had Homelander and we've had uh oh crap, the Viltramite, uh Omni Man. He they're evil they're evil Supermen, right? We've, we've no, seen uh, that. But they're they're, they're they're evil Superman, but there's a difference. Right? There is so not Anakin Skywalker no, there is a difference. Anakin Skywalker was a great villain because he was good before. Right, so like he's a great villain because he was good before, he was a hero before, then he became Darth Vader. So, and that's why people like him even more. Superman, just describe Om- Superman, just he's been- described Omni Man. So, you well, I don't know who's Omni Man is. You gotta watch him, you gotta watch, you know. gotta watch Invincible. All right, oh, you're talking, all right, but Omni Man was always gonna be evil, yeah, so but like, and like, but we, like, like, I know, here, here's, I, I, here's, I'm here's not, what I'm saying, I know. here's what I'm saying, right is the same thing we were talking before about groundwork. They jumped into, because what by the time Justice League came out, what what were we on? Two Avengers movies by that by that point? Yeah. yeah, we were on two Avengers movies by that point. They were trying to get to the big team-up movie without being like, hey, let's build up the fan base. Let's get these people, people that aren't introduced to these characters. Let's get them in. They didn't introduce, they didn't bring in Green Lantern. They didn't bring in Martian Manhunter. <laughs> Uh, they, yeah, like they yeah, sideline cyborg, and, 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 and another thing is, people are excited that James Gunn is gonna is now the head of DC or the co head yeah. of DC. It's like, wh- why? Like, wh- like, it's like I, he. I don't know. I think like, I think is, he has an attention to detail that they've been lacking on that side, but James Gunn's movies tend to be on the funnier side. 
Like, have you watched, you watched the new Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, I didn't like it that much. You are <laughs> like, you're an outlier. That movie, that is way better than the first one. It is I, way better I, than the first one. I, and it, it's, 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 I, I didn't, it's I didn't, movie. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel it progressed anything. I didn't feel like it was a, it was a, that great of a movie. It was progressed like, what? It's a Suicide it, Squad movie. Like everybody in the movie is meant I, to die. Like the team is put together to die. Right. I just didn't feel. I didn't. And I, I, I wasn't too hyped about it. It was just. It wasn't taken too seriously. I, like I, I just didn't. I wasn't a fan of it. I, I, I truth, truthfully, I wasn't a fan of it. I, like, I, I get that. Like, but it, like. It, and I, it's it's like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, like Volume One was fantastic. Volume Two was okay, you know. Like James Gunn came out with it, uh, like uh, movies, and all of a sudden you're giving him the keys to DC. James Gunn, it's like, like, uh, like I I gotta look it up real quick, right? But I'm pretty sure Suicide Squad made a shit ton of money for way more than they expected it to, right? And then. They went and they took they gave Peacemaker a show and Peacemaker was really a really good show, surprisingly good show, great performance by John Cena, like surprisingly like yeah, it, death to a very gag character, like they gave a gag character more death depth to him than they gave you know Superman and Batman in Justice League. You get what I'm saying? So I no, think I, I, I think I James Gunn. Like while I might not, but it's a I lot. It, I, it's a lot for for just being a while, big series. You know? While like, I don't think, at least I personally haven't seen anything to be like I can trust this man with the entire universe of stories. What I can say is that it seems like by putting someone who has produced things for Warner Brothers that have done better than whoever else is producing anything, and then he has a level. He pay, has a level of attention to detail that nobody else seems to have that been like Josh Whedon or any of those other people that are putting together these movies seem to have, like, it seems like that's, and they didn't make him the sole, they didn't make him the sole uh, producer, the sole head. You know what I mean? He, yeah. He, it's he's, just, it's like he's, he's co-CEO. He's, he's co yeah. So like, it's not that they gave him a hundred percent trust, but they, they're at least putting somebody in charge. Right. Like that's that's like I. It's sad to see, like, because apparently the next Batman movie was supposedly going to be a Batman Beyond movie, where or is is that Michael Keaton? Where yeah. Michael Keaton was going to play old Bruce Wayne? Uh, like, holy shit, right? But at the same time, I mean, like, they're trying to make something cohesive. Yeah. So like, they, I think like in that respect, like, if you want to compete with Marvel. You can't. You have to stop making separate movies because I people think, are getting confused. But like, I, I also think, right? Like, they were trying. They were trying to do both, right? They they found out like their DCEU or whatever the hell you want to call it wasn't working, and so they're like, hey, let's just make independent movies. But they never formally stopped the older ones. I mean, we still got. DCEU movies coming out like with the flash. And at that point, you know, you're hearing about man of steel too, but then the Joker and the Batman who are two characters from the same comic book line, their movies have nothing to do with each other. So they were like, Hey, let's just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. You know what I mean? And at the same time, no one knows what's going on. So but, I mean, the, the fact is that Joker made over a billion dollars, <laughs> and it was a fucking Joker. I mean, <laughs> I was like, so, so like, and I, I, I saw a movie. I, a lot of people thought it was boring. I thought it was a good character development movie. Um, and then I kind of feel bad for Robert Pattinson's movie because I really enjoy this movie. Is but the Batman movie? Yeah, the Batman think, movie did well. Yeah, the Batman movie did well. Like, I, like, what's going to happen with that now? Like, so I, I heard it? nothing. I heard everything's fine with it. I heard like I haven't heard any bad news about it. Um, of course, I want to know. Yeah, see Robert the bat. Batman. Like I'm looking at uh, Screen Rant's thing on it. Batman Two is still safe amid this shakeup. It seems that only Matt Reeves, the Batman Two, remains safe under Gun and Saffron's new leadership. So right as of right now, the Batman Two is safe. So Robert, and yeah, and Joker's safe too. Yeah, yeah. Joker, because Joker is already been like it's already being filmed. 
So like they can't stop. I mean, it they now. can though. They completely finished the Batgirl. Finished. Edited. Ready to go. Right. But and canceled but it and said, no, we're not letting that shit out. So they could do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, but here's the deal. Joker, well, they could still cancel it, right? You're, but they have to see it first. Um, and I don't think they're going to go for that because the joke, the, the fact is Joker made over a billion dollars. I think with Batgirl... I got to see this. Like, from my, under, my, my, my understanding, John Camp, BS show, uh, the screen testings were terrible. Yeah, I mean... Like, they're absolutely ter- terrible. So they were like, I... This is... <laughs> And I think it, I think it's from the uh, some famous directors. I forget what directors. I think um, they're pretty famous. Um, but basically, D, like John Campion show, they were saying like they basically by DC canceling that movie, they mm-hmm. basically saved their careers. Probably because they're 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 pro- they're good directors. That's wild, man. Hey, James, worldwide, James worldwide, Gun- that movie made. Over a billion dollars. That movie was not that good. It wasn't a billion dollar movie. What? Joker. What? Yeah, Joker? Oh. Joker was not a billion dollar movie. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's it's a you know it's a testament it's a testament of the Joker as a yeah. character. Yeah. It's a testament of Batman. It's the Batman saga. You know, this is they're very, both the Joker and Batman are the the best or like the most famous superheroes of all time. Oh, Joker, the most famous villain of all time. Batman being the most the the, the most famous uh, hero of all time. Two like combination of those two. Think about that. A combination of those two. Yeah, both from the same world. Yeah, I mean, like he's Batman's so, one of the most famous, you know, heroes of all time. He, he's the most famous. Nah, so, he is the most. I famous. I would put it. I would put he's probably third after Superman, Spider Man, and then Batman. Batman is the most. Famous. No, he's not. Spider Man, I, I would say Spider Man. Even Spider Man would be uh, Spider Man would be second. Superman would be third. Superman uh, maybe is begin- number one. Period. Super- no, most, Superman most, is third. Because- most well known. No, well known, right? The- but I'm talking about most famous. Yeah, like people that people like the, the Batman. Oh, yeah, I fucking watch Batman. They don't like Batman is the most famous hands down. Currently, right? Currently, like with the Arkham games coming out with his TV series. It's like every time Batman comes in, they're like, holy shit, it's Batman. You know, like, it, I that's, think, that's the no, effect that he has. You no, know, like, and we can cut this. We're hitting on two hours, 20 minutes. But I think that's because Batman's easy to do, right? Because he's a guy. He's a guy in a costume, right? He doesn't have superpower. He has techs and the tech and detective skills, right? So, like, it's he's, he's an easy character, and his world is kind of easy to do. Right, when you start talking about you start talking I, you start talking I, about people that I, can fly. I, 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 listen to me now. Hold on, I, hear me out. He's easier to do than Superman. He's easier to do than Spider Man because they have powers. They have special effects that really have you really have to get into the special effects. Like how much of the Batman was practical effects versus any of the Spider Man movies? I I would disagree with you because. Like I like Batman not because of the special effects. I like Batman because overall, in essence, the comic book, Batman is a detective. You're and just there's, re- there's you're reiterating a, what I'm saying. No, it's a Batman, but that's the thing. It it might be easy to do, but it's relatable. Yeah, like, like it's it's all detective. it's all it's it like again, Batman's a man, right? So it's Batman easier. It's easier. Exactly. It's easier to make a show. It's easier to make. Uh, 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 it's easier to get people to relate to it because they don't. The suspension of belief isn't as high as a Spider Man, as a Superman, as a and, and and absolutely, and that's why Batman. When you saw the the Christopher Nolan movies, they're very grounded on reality, which makes it even better because it, you can you can sit down and you're like and see like, yeah, this this is obviously all fantasy. But yeah, I mean, like, could, yeah, you know, like there's yeah. there's a there's a sense of like it could be real, you yeah, know? yeah, especially especially the Dark Knight, Oof. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but all right, with brother. that, it's been good. We're closing out the year. Happy holidays, Hanukkah, Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, 
if we don't come back uh, before then. I doubt we will, but we'll try. Um, and yeah, you guys just, I hope you had a good 2022. Uh, if you're like myself and haven't caught COVID yet, congratulations to you. <laughs> Rob, do you have any closing words for, for the end of the year? Uh, I I do. It's been one heck of a year. That 2022 has been remarkable in terms of gaming, in terms of like Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok. It's a, it's been a year where gaming has been more and more approaching that cinematic realism that could potentially replace TV shows and movies. In, in a way, right? In entertainment, not completely, but it could be, it's getting more towards that area. I'm very happy to see what's going to happen in 2023 and the video games that are coming out with Starfield coming up. I am really excited for that game. Anyway, we will see. Uh, with that being said, with, with, now, that, with that being said, that being said, we're out of here. See y'all next year. All right. All right. All right take care.